Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of Superhero Speak. But I think many of the people that love this character and that love superheroes in general have used these stories as inspiration to say, you know what, I'm going to do something good in the world. I'm going to make a difference like my hero when I was a kid. That is my fondest memory of it because when, you, when you're doing comic books, you want them to affect people. Right. You want people to care. You want, you want to strike emotions. And I knew that that clone saga was striking a lot of emotion. Can you yep. imagine uh, Pulp Fiction starring Goofy and uh, Mickey Mouse? I can totally imagine that. <laughs> I'm no sure one. somebody's written that one too. Pounder with cheese and France, Mickey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> ale with cheese, Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> I can totally. See? I, I, would, I would watch the hell out of that movie. Yes, I gladly saw, sacrifice that my, my progeny to you of a mighty Marvel beast. <laughs> <laughs> But Neil Adams is somewhere going, mm, it's, it's my time. Uh, <laughs> How do you measure success? Welcome to Superheroes Speak. <laughs> I'm your host, Dave. And I'm three sheets to the wind, John. I'm just regular JD without his headset driving in the car on the Bluetooth. Probably sound like shit. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we do go for realism. Like, we, we, we don't front here. We just, you know. It, put, put it all out there. All on Front Street. It's NPR ambiance. <laughs> so how is everyone doing? JD, we missed you last week. You unfortunately had family business to take care of. How are really, you doing? Wife, really did miss the you. Wife had, the wife had strep, and she asked me to take care of the kids. Strep ran through our whole house whether i brought it home for school or andy brought it home for school somebody brought strap home from school and like it ripped through us and it was michelle's turn last week so i had to be dad and stuff up and couldn't couldn't do the show but um, everything's fine now it's going good yeah except for the, to complain about. everything is good except for the tunnels you're going through <laughs> oh I'm driving on the farm ward, man. I live in rural Illinois. I'm doing the best I can tonight, man. No. Just just tell them to move the sheep that's holding the antenna a little bit to the <laughs> left. I don't know if we even have sheep in Illinois, to be honest. I've never seen any sheep. we got plenty of cows. Oh. Or buffalo, probably. <laughs> no, I wish. Buffalo would be cool. Just cows. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, then, then how are you, John, besides drunk? <laughs> well, yada, 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 you know, Actually, stuff, we, what? Stuff, stuff we can't talk about. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. How's the Minecraft going? Oh, the Minecraft the, oh, it gets more and more interesting every time, every, every, everything new I learn about it. This, of course, is a conversation for people who aren't programmers who would be bored to hell and wouldn't even know what the hell we were talking about. But uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm deep into trying to figure out how to create structures when when you start a new world, like how to add structures that are created uh, in the world. I'm trying to find the best way to just PK everybody. You'd understand that if you're a game. But player yeah. Player kill? Yes. I, I just want to, I just want to player kill everybody. I, I, I want to make things that will make, that will make Minecraft impossible. Just, just to, <laughs> I want to grief anybody who's trying to play with Armand. It's going to be Fun as hell. Yeah. Otherwise, the end of the summer season in, in anime has has sunsetted and not not much to talk about really like summer i found maybe three and three animes three three shows that i liked and otherwise there was almost nothing out there except for overlord which was like you know the like overlord's been around for a while this was the fourth season i think or third season and i haven't watched it yet but uh, you know that was the only like main really exciting thing so everybody's waiting for the fall season now, which is going to have Mob Psycho. We're going to actually, JD, we, we're going to talk about something you might be interested in involving SAG, uh, SAG-AFTRA. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that a little later. Dave can, can tell us when we can talk about it. But it, it has to do with Mob Psycho coming out in the fall season. So, did, uh, hmm? Speaking of anime, just curious, did either of you watch Goodbye Don Gleese? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Obviously, people don't pay attention to their emails. It's a it's a screener that we got. It's an anime, and uh, how did I miss this? It's a, the... it's a, it's a drama. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it another time. It's uh, let's just say I had our time watching it. I fell asleep. <laughs> if I'm being honest, 
and it's this, this, this isn't like really sad like grave of the fireflies right like you're not this isn't like one of those things where you you either have to drink heavily afterwards or like you know reconsider your life options right it's i'm trying I'm to not think doing of another grave of the fireflies anybody who's seen grave of the fireflies if you're listening to this you know what i'm talking about and you're all you've already reached for a bottle so I, it's like, it, there is a sad story that goes through it and it's a it's you know it's it's a, a coming of age story b like a like a goonies type story hmm. okay. so it's, oh. it's 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 heavy drama though oh. anime it wasn't what i was expecting when i started watching it Some i anime fell asleep books. twice because it's sub i mean it's dubbed not subbed oh come on i mean subbed not dubbed That's yeah not yeah su- subs are usually better though but i gotta the- read I know, but the voice actors can the original voice actors convey way more of the feeling oh, sure, you're supposed but... to have for the scene than some of the du- like. I'm not crapping on a lot of dubs, but most I found that most dubs just don't quite convey the right feeling for each of the scenes because they don't have the original direction. They're just interpreting it, you know. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. I watched that. I'm going to have to watch it now, too. I what can't else? say what that else? I didn't see an anime that you did. That's so. not right. <laughs> <laughs> One that we were given to watch. Oh, so I went to the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair this weekend. And it was funny. It kind of came up last minute. And the reason we decided to go, John will probably know who I'm talking about. JD will have no idea. Don Juan and Miguel, it was their last weekend in PA. Oh. And, you know, I haven't gone in. Well, I mean, that, there wasn't one. I don't think there was one last year or the year before. There definitely wasn't one in 2020. I don't know about the year last year. And uh, and it was funny because, like, my girlfriend's like, oh, do you want to go? And I'm like, okay. And then I looked and I'm like, well, this is the last weekend for them. She's like, all right, we'll, we'll go. We'll go. And uh, they're following the circuit. Yeah. Well, they do it every year. They don't, you know, they're not here mm-hmm. the whole season. And then so had fun, consumed much alcohol, stayed at a really weird hotel in Lancaster called the rock Lilits. it's a rock and roll themed hotel that's like set up to do events that makes no sense to be in the middle of lancaster <laughs> i'm like who is this for like the cows coming here to like <laughs> party or what it was very strange the pa renaissance festival is nothing to sneeze at it is huge it's, oh it is it's, huge it's, it's as yeah. big as at least the one in houston and the and the one in sterling forest new york so, and those yeah. are like three of the biggest ones that I know of. I got got a new hat. This is great content for audio podcast. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine <laughs> feather you have in that cap. <laughs> oh, you can see us, but we can't see you. <laughs> yes. Eyes yeah. forward, JD. <laughs> um, for those who, who for those who don't know, the PA Run Fair is run by the Mount Hope Winer, who makes some of the best wines, I think, at least on the East Coast. And then they now have a distillery which is why I'm drinking because I bought myself plenty of alcohol while I was there. <laughs> I am having their, their saucy apple, apple liqueur, which is like an apple cider. Delicious. If you like apple cider, this is good. And yeah, so that was my, my week. I had fun. Yeah. I've never had a glass of wine in my life. What? Never. Never. Re- nope. re- uh, re- reason? My dad's an alcoholic and that's his drink of choice. Dude, uh, my last name, my last name's O'Grady for crying out loud. The uh, only reason, uh, like all of, several people in my family are alcoholics. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't want to be one. So well, I you're a functioning really one, John. No, I'm That's not true. a functioning one. I've tried to be an alcoholic. It's just that I keep forgetting to drink sometimes. Like stupid <laughs> me. Too much my, of a commitment. I, 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 yeah, I know, right? I'm just, I just keep dropping the ball. You know, I'm just a failure. I'm just <laughs> enough to be an alcoholic. That's funny. Well, my grandfather was an yeah. alcoholic. He he drank himself to death. Yeah, mine which... hasn't. My dad's still around. So you know, uh... yeah. So what's do you not drink at all, or you just don't drink wine? I don't drink very often. It's just never. Uh, oh, it's not that I particularly enjoy doing. I get it. No, I completely understand. Not yeah. committed enough to be straight edge. I guess. Yeah. Right. I I normally don't just spend that kind of day. My my uh, my grandfather was fifty three. When he passed away and they said, you know, they did an autopsy and they said his liver was the size of a football. Oh, so, yeah. And he passed away before I was born. This is what I heard from my father and my, my uncles growing up. So you're yeah. listening to old man talk old man on iTunes. Probably. 
first. No, time. this is anti-alcoholic talk. Yeah. As John and I are drinking. <laughs> oh no, I'm done. I'm done drinking for the night. Like I know, I know my limit. Oh come on, one more. No, no, no. I've because then had, the podcast will get really fun. I've you, you know I've had four. I'm I'm good. The other thing I did is I watched She Hulk. So JD, have you watched it at all? Do you want the answer that's going to make you feel better, <laughs> or the answer that is reality? I <laughs> would like to be. I would like you to be honest, JD. I haven't seen an episode since the pilot. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it, it's it's okay, JD. I mean, I I mean, I know how busy you are actually being a real creator, unlike me. But <laughs> motivated me. Like again, the first episode was fine. I enjoyed it, but like I haven't been motivated to go back and watch the rest. Like it, people are enjoying it. That's cool, but it's just I don't know, man. It's not just not your cup of tea. Yeah, no, it's not for me, and that's okay. Mm. Oh, know? I love it. I, I, I mean. I mean, you you may watch it later when you get bored or something. You've got nothing else to do. It's it's perfectly serviceable. Nice. It yeah, I know, right? It, so, but it's it's perfectly serviceable. Like it's not like it is it is entertaining. I mean, if, but if it's not your cup of tea, I get it. But I'm enjoying it. I it, do it, you remember it, they, they tried they, to do at a, least it's not bad. They tried to do a superhero comedy a couple years ago. Oh, that was, was with, what's her name from High School Musical. Yeah, Vanessa Hudgens. And like, yeah, Vanessa uh, Hudgens, right. right. And from, it was set in the DC uh, Universe, too. Yeah, the yeah. dude from Slippity. I can't remember his name. But, like, that was a show that was promising us, like, a comedy based around superheroes. Powerless. Powerless, was, that was it. That it was, was called it. Powerless, and it had, uh, what's his name from Firefly? Um, Tudyk. Right, yeah. Tudyk, yeah. yeah. Tudyk. Tudyk. Alan Tudyk, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I always it had a lot of from, people, too. Uh, Christian Kirk. A Knight's uh, Tale. Yeah, this, it had a lot of... A lot of interesting people in it. But and it just it was... wasn't like, because there was act, no actual superheroes in it. So I think people were looking for that. This, we get actual superheroes in. I, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I think, I mean, this episode it goes again, like when you understand what they're going for. Number one, I find it funny. Number two, like they're going for this identity crisis type story. And I think they're doing such a great job. This week, she goes to a wedding <laughs> Where it's the first time she feels comfortable. She wants to go as She-Hulk because ever, that's her popular side. And the bride, this is one of her best friends from school, you know, she shows up and the bride's like, can you like just be Jen? You know? Yeah. And it's it's it was such a great commentary on the whole duality thing. Like it's, it's written so well. Yeah. I mean, fans are pissed off, right, John? Because they promised, they teased daredevil at the end of the previous episode but he didn't show up yet but we know oh, he's going to be there i didn't expect it you know yeah i have a like, feeling that's going to be like the last episode may, maybe or maybe he shows up next one it doesn't it doesn't matter like i said i'm you know it's not exciting but like i'm enjoying each episode they're short enough where you know it's and en entertaining enough where right. it's like pop and candy you know it's like it's like a box of tic tacs so I, I'm, you know, and, and uh, I'm kind of interested to see where this is going because they've been Titania. I don't know where that's going, whether she's going to be an anti-hero or what. And we know that this new threat, if we don't want to talk about it yet, this threat that care. was, I, hmm? talk, about it. talk about it. I don't care. Okay, okay. So like there's, there's somebody called the Hulk King and there's a whole organization behind this website that they found. That wants um, to kill that want or or wants to grab some of Jennifer's blood. That's right. Yes. So that you know, for for, for nefarious reasons. Uh, but so, they also talk in. There's like a forum where they're talking about trying to kill her too. So right, the standard the standard stuff that we all deal with. The I mean, that's that's not even fit like fiction these days. So it's, a, so it's a nice commentary on like women on Twitter because they get death threats and stuff like that all the time from lunatics. So. Yeah, I think, it's, a, I think it's a commentary not only on that, but it's also a commentary on again them pulling actual stupid shit that people are saying about She Hulk. You know, the 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 Chads that don't know that She Hulk was a character. They didn't create her just for the show, and you know they're going, "Oh my, She Hulk's a guy," or "My Hulk's a guy." You know, all that stupid stuff. You know, I've 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 you know, and I've I've dealt with something like that. I actually went to a movie. What what, what was it? What? I went, I went to a movie with somebody and I was talking to them about Batgirl. Yeah. Or, no, not Bat, Batwoman. 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 I was talking to them about Batwoman and they were like, why Why did they have to create a, a, a lesbian, you know, Batman? 
And I'm like, that's the character. <laughs> and it's a character that's been around since I want to yeah. say the 40s. Yeah. At least the 50s. Like, well, yeah, it, but as a, as a lesbian, she was you're really attenuated there. We didn't catch that, man. I want to say, oh, six. You're really attenuated. We did not catch any of that. Yeah. We got, got a bunch of static. Uh-oh. Maybe <laughs> we lost we... him, too. God, what is superhero speak without this real-life drama? It's like 15 hours. Oh, sorry. Fuck it. I'm just going gonna... to... I'm out. I'm just going to move. Yeah, we'll see you when you get home, man. I said, fuck it. Don't worry about me. Just move on. Okay. I think I, what he was saying is, yeah, when they reintroduced the character, I think in the early 2000s or late 90s, that's when they made her a lesbian, which, okay, that's fine. But it's not like they didn't create a new character. She's been around for a long time. So, right. Yeah. And, and, and making her, uh, you know, gay or lesbian was, you know, made before all of this hubbub about, you know, ab- about let's, let's, let's be woke, right? This, well, I mean, the whole woke thing is, is, ugh. You know, it such such a stupid thing on both sides, but but yeah, it's it. I mean, it, it like that's the character, and and right. it's the same problem with with She Hulk. It's like, oh, why why do you have a woman Hulk now? It's like, well, no, she's better. She's probably been one of one of the most important characters in Marvel for a very long time, and she's you know like, <laughs> and and they've leaned in the com onto the comedy with her for a long time too. Like that's not a new thing, and people are upset about that. And it's like read a freaking comic like she breaks the four she's been breaking the fourth wall since the 80s like it's yeah, not her, a new her thing and, her and howard the duck have been the main fourth wall breakers before deadpool before deadpool yes. yeah and and she's like I don't, what is it she's like she works with the living tribunal as like yeah. as like a main main judicial adjunct for the entire marvel universe she's a representative <sighs> of the of the living tribunal for for yeah they you know, judging things like it's you, that's not a small thing they've done a lot of weird things with her for the sake of being funny too and it's like she's a great character like it's the show's delivering everything i want out of a she hulk show like i don't want a serious overly serious she hulk show like yes if you want to put her in other stuff going forward and make her a serious character and those things fine but like let's Let's have fun with her. Oh, God, God, I can't wait for a movie with her and Deadpool in it. Like, that's going to be epic. I'm telling you, one of the movies or somewhere we're going to get Deadpool, Howard the Duck, and her breaking the fourth wall together. I don't know how. I mean, would they, they, I, 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 I'm like. Howard the Duck was an endgame. Right, because, because now that Disney owns Marvel, they have the rights to the original Howard the Duck character. Yes. Not the bastardization they had to do when Disney threatened Marvel with lawsuits because of Howard. Right. So, yeah. yeah. He is one of the characters that comes out of one of the portals in Endgame, for those who may have missed that. So, you know what? Well, he, JD... was, he was in He was in two. He was in, he was, it wasn't just Endgame. He was, what was it? He was in one of the Guardians, the Guardians of the Galaxy, too, when they blew up the, yes. yeah. the Collector, right? Right, right. He's in, he's in the end scene, right. Right. Uh, I was just trying to mention the most recent thing he's been in. Hmm. You know, JD dropped off on purpose, I think, just on yeah. time. Because, you know, now it's time for social media madness. <laughs> the bastard. He had a plan. Oh, go, I'm going to a tunnel like here. <laughs> so this first bastard. section I'm calling, <laughs> what's a fan got to do? Our good fan, Kassan Warren, texted at us or tweeted at us no. regarding the last episode. Three different things he said. Three things. Samaritan was like a bowl of honey nut Cheerios. Safe, familiar, even if it promises a little more than what you get, you're not disappointed. <laughs> I mean, just just any any old bucket of popcorn would do, and it's a it's a good movie to get through. You know, it's funny, like I keep thinking about that too, right? Because it's we're in that age where, especially with us doing a podcast, and I think it's podcasters in general. We watch so many movies and we overanalyze them. Like we forget how to just enjoy a movie half the time. I haven't forgotten to enjoy a movie. I mean, you know, as long know, as Zack alcohol. Snyder and Zimmer don't have anything to do with it, I'm fine. There's just... <laughs> Second, he said, I have a lack of faith in your voices. I heard, I'm sorry. I heard a lack of faith in your voices when you brought up Star Trek. Please, for the sake of your nostalgia, 
Watch Strange New Worlds as a bonus and a laugh. Watch Lower Decks. You will not regret it. Okay, I would, except I am already subscribed to almost every streaming service on the planet. And Paramount Plus just does not have enough so, for me to so, subscribe to that. Okay, okay. Too. so he <laughs> actually has messaged us separately. Yeah. He has offered to let us use his password so that we can watch these shows. I don't, you know. So I've, maybe I've we'll do. I've heard Lower Decks is good. And I've heard Strange New Worlds is the Star Trek we've been waiting for. Maybe so, those two might get me to, to do so it. So this you is know? what I'm saying. Like, okay, Kassan, maybe we'll take you up on that. And we'll do a one shot on the first episode of Strange New Worlds. So we'll see. I think. That's and if we if we do it though, I like I I can I can get the streaming service and I'll, I'll <clears throat> yeah Paramount. You don't don't listen to this. I I could share my account with you guys for you guys to watch it. And this last one, JD, you bastard! You <laughs> guys teased me with a promise to watch Sandman. I turned in the last two weeks and was let down. What does a fan have to do around here to get you to jump on the bandwagon? I think I think that's what they had to do. I think he's done it. Would you like well, to? Can, should we do a review of Sandman? I've I've, yeah, I've watched I think, everything okay. in so, the last two episodes. So here's here's I what can, I'm going to say. Because next week, what's what we'll do? Next week we'll do Sandman. The following week will be New York Comic Con coverage, which will just be me because you guys aren't going. I, and then, but uh, hey, last time you'll have to do it alone. I'm going back on the on the road next year, so. So so yeah, but yeah, the, my back is healed. <laughs> I'm not doing it alone. My girlfriend's going with me, and my son. So there won't be. I any would funny hope you're not doing it alone because you know it's just. That's called masturbation. I know. Uh, oh, oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! There's, Hold there's on. There's my one blue joke for the year. Sorry, guys. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold on! Hold on! There is. I was listening to Cult Forty Five. I was listening to an older episode. Uh huh. And apparently there is a banned radio commercial for corn nuts. What? Yes. Uh, yeah, I could see that. Okay. And there's a, and they're singing. It's the song is "Bust a Nut," <laughs> and then they keep saying He's "mastication, it. mastication." Oh which, come you know, on! That was chewing. on purpose. That was on freaking purpose. Oh my god! It is. It was done on purpose, and the commercial got banned. But if you look it up, ladies and gentlemen, look it up on YouTube. Banned corn nuts commercial you will not be disappointed it is one of the funniest things you'll ever hear That's thanks hilarious. to brandon and randy for uh, for sharing that on their show all right but but back to uh, kasan's comment we'll do same i i I'd, I'd like to do sandman this i i mean just just off the top of my head this sandman season this this show damn primo i mean like oh wait so you have watched the, it yeah, yeah, I've watched everything except the last two episodes. I have not watched it yet. Oh, it is, it is wonderful. Okay. It is, it is awesome. Now, wait, is that HBO Max or Netflix? That's uh, Netflix. Okay, I mean, I have both, so it doesn't matter. But, but I've been debating whether or not to cancel Netflix because I haven't still been so watching much all... on there though. I have been watching it though, like all the, all the gamma I, stuff is on there. I got it. Okay, I got it specifically for daredevil and those shows when they came out now that they're all gone i find that like occasionally i watch stuff on there but like you know my late wife god rest her soul she watched the office on there constantly all the time and a couple other shows right but it's like the only thing i watch on there okay and this is gonna be this is a a view into my my ultra nerdness is the great british baking show and if oh. you've never watched the Great British Baking Show, oh. you do yourself a favor and watch it, and you'll be like, "Oh my God, England is so much fucking better than us." <laughs> well, first off, yeah, but second off, dude, they've got Morbius on Netflix. How could you cancel it? Oh my God! <laughs> All right, no, no, seriously though, seriously, seriously, they have Lucifer, The Witcher, the the movie Age of yeah, Adeline, which is really good. Love, Death, and Robots. I mean, um, you know, I got a thin thing for Henry Cavill, so I should watch the. Wish. Sandman, Sandman is is definitely a a new, a brand new, and yet extremely worthy addition to the things that should draw you to this. What else? What All right, we're gonna watch, we're all gonna the anime Sand that they put on there. I mean, we're gonna at least do the first episode of Sandman next week. I mm. promise. So, okay. all right. We also, had, of course, talked about Thunderbolts cast announcement, to which Drew C said, "I was hoping for Bullseye." From Daredevil to be in the lineup. Yeah, but I understand. Colin the, Firth is, no. I mean. 
it's the MCU. Like they had to use established characters, like to bring in someone to bring in Bullseye, who should be the foil to Daredevil. They have to make bring in Daredevil of... first, right? Right. They have to bring in Daredevil first. It doesn't. That would be like sense. making something. Uh, 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 that would be like making a movie about like Morbius or or Venom without <laughs> Spider Man. Nobody oh. would in their right mind would do that. And then, of course, the Gorilla Brain podcast said Black Widow failed to sell my first appearance of Taskmaster at a decent price. Hmm. Maybe this is time there make the character worth a shit and I'll get paid. The Suicide Legends of Tomorrow. Enough said. Taskmaster was kind of, I mean, the the whole thing, the whole thing with the Black Widow movie, that should have been done six years before it was actually put out. And and it should have been uh, yeah. done a lot better. I, I I they they did her they they did I will, um, Scarlett Johansson a really bad disservice for for doing for for doing what they did to her. I will stand yeah. behind that comment that I made for a long time. Like the biggest problem with this Black Widow movie is not the movie itself; is that it didn't come out when it should have come out. It yeah. should have come out in the time frame the movie takes place. Yeah, it would have worked perfectly then. The fact that it came out afterwards as, as like a look back was just stupid. Like, and they just they just have. I mean, it, it was written pretty well, but they did kind of half ass a lot of it. And and it was a little Master over the top at the end too, with the thing falling out of the sky and them fighting as it's falling. And I Task get Master that could have been better too. Like to turn into to basically turn what was essentially a mutant into a robot. My question is with Taskmaster. And I'm guessing Thunderbolts will answer that is, did she have her ability to copy because of her control, her mind control that she was under, or was it an innate ability that she already had? Right. Because now that we have Ms. Marvel and they've mentioned mutants, right. She could possibly have had her mutant ability before they stuck. I would love. Yeah. That would work. Mm -hmm. That'd be another way to bring more mutants into the the MCU without bringing the x-men just yet so yes which is funny because she was going to be a mutant in the comics miss marvel and then they made her a a, 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 a robot yeah all right again no, you can't marvel tweet about right. man of steel without getting a lot of responses again and the same <sighs> tweet as before is it a good superman movie is it a good movie what did you think and we got the something something cast said it is a visually pretty movie, but in my opinion, that's what ZS does when left to his own devices. Visually pretty, but not much else. I, you know, I can't say much about the color palette, but yeah, I mean, and we've talked about this before, the, the something something cast, that Zack Snyder makes amazing trailers. So- Listen to this, right? And, and so he's got good shots, yeah. But and they followed it up with, "I've always said, when given strict boundaries, yep. we get three hundred and Watchmen. When left to his own thing, we get Man of Steel and Sucker Punch." Right, true. When it's not an established story that he's just copying, there's not a story. It's just pretty. And Sucker Punch was pretty too. I mean, it it it, it almost it was a cross between a regular movie and uh, Sin City. Yeah. You know, it was very very highly stylized. And and just short of just straight up animation in some cases. So yeah. Ryan C, Very who's at so- too. <laughs> 1313, replied to him, said, but do you know who would be great in Sucker Punch? And that was like the end of the conversation. So I don't know what, what that's about. Who Sucker Punch? Like Henry Cavill <laughs> it would be great Sucker Punch. There you go. Scarlett the, Johansson would have fit in the Sucker Punch. Yeah. The annotated GM, annotated, sorry. The annotated GM said... I think that Man of Steel had been a new I if if I think that if Man is I think he meant if not is I think that if Man of Steel had been a new IP, it would have been better served. It is such a thematic departure, thematic for Su- departure from Zen. Superman yeah. that it is that it does not work. Yeah, exactly. Like we've said that over and over again. But I don't right. like that's what I said in in the episode is that as a movie, I don't think it works. Like it doesn't make the motivations of the villains just don't work in that. It doesn't. Well, make sense. you're assuming motivations. Like everybody's just doing everything because plot. You know, like right. there's no real motivation. It's just I'm doing this because it looks pretty and and the plot demands it. And and 
Yeah, if it had been new IP, but if it had been new IP, it also would have been fighting nowadays with Brightburn and Invincible and The Boys. And I mean, we've done Superman clones that have gone bad. And I kind of already. feel like I, I think you're going down a great thread there because if it had been new IP, Snyder would have just made Superman evil. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, JD's back. JD, JD, you're having technical difficulties. We're almost through social media madness. Oh, thank God. There's a dog behind you. <laughs> there is a dog behind me. There is a it's puppy. Astro. There is it's a really astro. cute little pup. And then finally about Man of Steel. Speaking of puppies. <laughs> and finally about Man of Steel. EJ Free Mayflower Maniac. Wow. Love that name. He's at a EJ lot, Free Author. <laughs> Still my favorite because as much as I love Reeves, Man of Steel actually gives us character growth instead of... What? Over these next eight seconds of narration, 12 years pass, and now step a fully formed Superman. Oh, my God. Go fuck yourself. Oh, oh wait. Wow, that might be the alcohol talking. No, go That's fuck it. yourself. This what? Ca- no character growth in that movie whatsoever. It's got zero of that. This dude's nuts. It's got negative character growth. I mean, you've got you've got his father telling it's, him maybe you should have let a busload of kids die. It's and you've got him destroying because... that, that tractor trailer, you know, because he was That's angry. Not... That's not character anything. That's yeah, it's not character growth. I need more alcohol. Because, look, look, look. Hey, get out of the closet. Come on. Hey, people should did be able you, to decide hey, when they come out the closet. Did you just oh, tell no, your no, dog no. to come out of the closet? Well, Let's... the dog literally got out of my closet. I don't want him to chew <laughs> stuff up. I, ha, ha, oh, man, that. if I was so drunk, that would be so funny. Grow up, guys. Come on. <laughs> okay, so, okay, back to Man of Steel. Wait, I so, watch anime and, and play D&D. What, how am I supposed to grow up? I'm, I'm on a... Wait, like, hold, hold on, hold on, no, 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 no. Yes, yes. So yes, back yes. to Man of Steel. Oh, we're still shitting on this dude. Okay. I don't want to. Yeah, I'm shitting on him. I'm going to shit him until he's covered in shit because. Oh, just be nice. He, character just... growth. He doesn't decide Damn, to dude. be fucking Superman in this movie. He's forced to be Superman. How's that fucking character growth? All right. Whoa. You, you know you're you're well, way Superman. weirder I'm, when you were drunk than I am. I'm sure his fucking growth is quite impressive. Yeah. I drank half this bottle. God, Come on. Damn it. So uh, so. You, I don't, you know, no, it's just, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, EJ, but uh, it just, listen. it, I'm sorry. It just, I, I don't, it, we obviously don't have the same opinion. Like at least they showed in, in the original Superman with Christopher Reeves, like him trying to make decisions and trying to, trying to hold up to the mantle that was given to him by his father and you by, kill- and by humans. You didn't kill anybody either. Little okay, little so, it's upon millions yeah. of people. So I, yeah. recently I shared a video with you guys, Christopher Reeve talking about Superman. JD, you said you loved the loved yeah. it. Can't hear you because you're not near the mic. He said but, he loved it. Yeah. Right. Like he talks about how he talks about the one of the things he talks about is the duality between Clark Kent and Superman. That is not explored at all. Yeah, he's Man never he's never Clark Kent in, the, in Superman. He's never Clark Kent. It in fact it doesn't even matter because Lois Lane figures out he's Superman right off the bat. He's he not did. Superman. Yeah. He's never Superman. No, he's he not. Like he's just he's Kal El of Krypton. He never establishes either personality of Clark true. Kent or Superman. Like very just, true. There's none of that. Like I said, this movie was made by a guy who doesn't understand Superman, who just wants to see shit get punched. Yep. Right? Yep. You and agree. blow up. And yeah. and and productly. Well, product, that's out of his control. <laughs> yes, that's not that's not under the control of Kal El. And then finally, the last thing for Social Media Madness this week. Of course, we talked about the Werewolf by Night trailer. JD, oh, you loved it. Werewolves of Night. Yes. To which Timothy Jones, our good friend, said, Here good go. old-fashioned black and white horror. By the way, I'll bet some of those people wished they bought a box <laughs> of Scooby Snacks. Nice. <laughs> I actually can't wait to see this. This looks good. You know? It looks really interesting. It's at the gotten, point. like, there were evil... Earl viewers who on in the media, not us. Fuck you, yeah. Disney. And damn, damn whoa, dude. whoa, dude. Dave's a Dave has worked up this week. Dave is unfiltered today. And the, and the reviews have been great. They said they say it's awesome. So I can't wait. Yeah, cool. uh, I, I I'm I'm all in on this. You know, I'm. It's going to be fun. That's that's the whole thing, and that's it should be right. Like yeah, oh. but 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 again, it's Disney branching out like marvel brand disney marvel branching out because like we, we started with having every movie being basically the same thing you know the good guy the bad guy having the same powers and 
you know, basically the same model. And now we're starting to see them branch out into, you know, black and white, you know, horror type stuff and, and she Hulk. It, and it's just, it's, it's really nice. You've got so many different things you can watch now. And, and so many, different, I mean, it's funny because like people genres, hear, I have to say that when people hear something like that is based on a Marvel comic, you're expecting something going in, but it's a throwback to the Marvel horror comics. It's not, mm-hmm. It's not a superhero. Well, not, comic not just that. Least. It looks like a grindhouse film, which is just great. I mean, no, I, it looks like a universal horror movie. That's what yeah, it looks yes. like. Yes. No, the black. Yeah. With, the, with those title cards. Oh, yeah. one of the original. Yeah, I thought you were yeah. talking about Universal Dark Universe. I'm like, no, no, no. No, no, like, no, no Tom real, Cruise here. <laughs> the real ones. Like, <clears throat> a grindhouse movie would be like. You're talking dirty. Bella Lugosi. Yeah. Bella L- Lugosi, right? Lugosi, yeah. not Lugosi. And Lon Chaney Jr. and whatnot. No, if it was a grindhouse, the, it would be like gritty Super Eight and. But it kind of, it know. kind of also had the feel of like what Nazis on the Moon or one of those guys, you know. Well, that oh was just kind, just kind of. Yeah. You're talking. You're saying it's the feel of a Rob Zombie project. I don't know if I agree with that, but. But know. but 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 I mean yeah I mean but it's I mean well that that's that's what it seemed like I mean yeah black and white but still had one of those one of those kind of grindhousey type feels to it but that's all good. Like I, yeah. I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm, I'm excited to see it. I can't wait it, to see it. It should be fun. I mean, it's the only Marvel thing I'm really looking forward to I'm, right now. To be honest with you, I'm curious if it's if it's right in with you. Mm, <laughs> I am curious what the wheelhouse. I wouldn't say normies. I'm going to say the the strict MCU fans are going to think of it. I don't think not the people that are comic book fans. The people that are just like I watch well, the MCU. Well, I like the MCU. Well, wait a minute. Turn that argument around. What's an MCU fan these days? Right. Like, it, it, are you talking? I'm telling like the people, people that just seen the movies have never read a comic. We're okay, but we can get. Yeah, JD had to take the dog out. We God, nothing but real life on this this podcast. Not like old Yeller folks. Oh God, no! I really <laughs> want to discuss this with JD. Yes, yeah, so but the, the, the the thing is that with Marvel fans these days, like, what is a Marvel fan? Because like originally Marvel, yeah, I'll wait till JD comes back. I'm sorry, people. Like, okay, JD. Yes, so, sorry. The dog demanded to be with my wife. I know. I have the same problem with the cats, except they usually just try to draw blood first. Uh, Wait, so you don't have a wife? M- I don't. No, <laughs> no, me. Well, the guy in the other corner. When, when they, when my cats want to go out or something. Anyway, look. So the thing is, like, what's a Marvel fan these days, right? Because originally Marvel fans were just people that liked the comic books, and they're like, oh, everything's in you know, on movies now. But then it was like, okay, Marvel fans are people that have seen most of the movies in a row and they like the standard format that Marvel came up with. But now they're branching out to, to different genres and, and, and really starting to explore what they can do with Marvel on film. And I think maybe they're bringing in new no. Marvel fans. Right? Wait, wait. Okay, so when I'm, I'm going to go back to something that JD has said many times on this podcast is that- Oh, I love that. What are we talking about? When <laughs> a lot of the movies- are different genres they are they're 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 wrapped in a superhero movie but you get spy thrillers you get yeah heist movies you get because that's whatnot. what superhero comics are superhero comics like traditionally have like blurred genre right and have really become their own thing like well the good really ones a, yeah. But right, I mean, but, all of them, really. Like, I mean, like, depending upon the superhero, like, Superman's going to be your typical, you know, Americana superhero story. Batman w- has always, from get go, waded heavily into the noir. Mm-hmm. You know, then in the 70s, we started introducing the horror branded superheroes, right? So, I mean, like, it's always been this, this, this smorgasbord, this right. amalgamation of various genres that make up superhero, right? Which right, is but the point, the point I was getting to is that comic book fans get that and we love it yes. we'll we'll read different comics that aren't even superhero comics and we love it the mcu fans to this point everything's been a superhero or a super villain or whatever because the studio this will be the first thing that steps outside of that really in the mcu right because well not the first thing i mean like they've been branching kind of out with she hulk now and right Loki's but it's been still, very different but it's still and, and a superhero like right, a but, werewolf is not a superhero. Right. But the thing is that the studios always had this idea of what a quote unquote superhero movie should be. Right. And up until now, they've been following the same formula. And then I I, I guess I a, WandaVision I a, started them, started with the branching out, or maybe it was Guardians of the Galaxy where they, where they started branching out and, you know, hey, here's humor. I, and then WandaVision, hey, here's a completely different genre. I would and, I would say it started when, uh, for Marvel specifically, I would say Captain America, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier? Oh, yeah, because the intrigue. That's, like 
it's an espionage thriller at its heart. And that's what people want. Whoa, these things can be kind of different in the same year we had Guardians, which was space opera. Right. Right. I think the reason space for that humor, is that, it? yeah, well, space, even, yeah, space humor, space opera. You know, I would say the reason for that is because a lot of the film execs from the 90s and were not comic fans. Mm-hmm. Or if they mm-hmm. were comic fans, they kind of like to survive in Hollywood, they had to kind of abandon that. And they're kind of told that only works there. And after a few generations, we've got unabashed comic fans. We've got comic writers now working in the film industry, right? Like, well, really been Disney has made sure that they're in trouble. But, they're even, but even before, even before Disney, like, like you, before Disney bought Marvel, you had the Marvel Creative Group. I mean, Kevin Feige is very clearly a comic book fan before he got into it. Yeah, like yeah. Richard Donner got it, but he wasn't really like a like a fan. And that's the fact that a lot of the baby boomers, when they were kids, you were thought to read comics until X age. And then you aged out. Right. And then that changed with the baby boomers themselves, right? Mm-hmm. They stuck with the hobby, but they didn't, they weren't in a position to make changes. Right. That's they one of the, uh, well, I, I, I mean, that's, that's one of the things I Stanley, disagree. Well, wait, I, I disagree with one thing you said. Donner what? definitely did get it. And we you only got it. to see what he meant when we got the Donner cut. Because because when the the studio got involved, well, you can say it was Superman. They, that was Superman one man. That was Superman, that was Superman hmm? two. Yeah, uh, Superman two. Superman one is pure Donner. But right? yeah, so Don Donner got it, but Donner didn't grow up. Re- I mean, he read Superman as a kid, but he didn't like like that's and that's what comics were designed to do. And comics then, were designed to be read for a few years, and then the the readership moves on. It wasn't until the sixties, the late sixties, mind you, where comics continuity really started to be a thing because the re- the fan base wasn't going anywhere, and that takes a generation to really process into major Hollywood. That's one of the things that Stan Lee said all the time is that he wanted to try to write comics that geared toward more towards adults or older people and had continuity. And the the publisher said the only adults that are reading these have mental disorders, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. And, but to and be he fair, proved them wrong. Of, but did you read the books that were that were being published at the time? They <laughs> weren't wrong. I mean, they're not good. Like the the comics from right. that era. Once EC Comics is put out of business, like comics suck. Like that dark no, era of not... comics. Like so, there's not they're not wrong necessarily. Stan Lee really and Jack Kirby really redefined the media. Yes. You know, right. and that's but that again that takes. It's only been within the last decade, maybe decade and a half, that they that that major media would stop putting bang zoom pow in every yeah. article that referred to comics. And and, like and taken, shoot and shooter type yeah, dialogue, right? Yeah. It's taken mm. it's taken even shooter started changing like shooter is far more progressive w- w- as a comic person than people give him credit for today. Like at the time, like that was still pretty revolutionary. He just had ideas about how the industry should run. And uh, to be frank, a lot of his stuff made sense. Like, but I mean, like it's it's only been in the last decade and a half that major media outlets have accepted that superhero movies and stuff like that can be outside. But that again, that took a generation that grew up on Watchmen. That took a generation that grew up on Dark Knight Returns. Like Mm. it's been it's been a hard sell to convince Hollywood that superheroes should be taken seriously. Now it's like the only thing that's taken seriously, the point where like, don't worry, darling has like these like clear comic book roots all over the <laughs> sucks, but it's very clearly like steeped in like, you know, trash sci-fi and comics. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right. Well, that is it for social media madness this week. Thank God. Really? I was like a half hour late and we just finished social media madness. Jeez. Yeah. We're running real late tonight. So if you, you would like to know, this week. yeah, <laughs> if you would like to know how you can find us on social media and be oh, part of social yourself. media madness, <laughs> oh god, be part of social media madness and go fuck yourself. Here's our good friend D Square to tell you more. Enjoying the show? Want to be part of social media madness? Make sure you are following superherospeak.com, where you can find all of the show's social media links at the top of the page. While you're there, you can check out old episodes of the podcast as well as some other great content. Check the site often because we are posting some great comic reviews as well as comic book and movie news content every day. Make sure and follow us on Twitter at Superhero Speak. And while you're there, check out the rest of the Geek World All Stars Podcast Network. You can follow them at stars underscore geek. 
Geek World All-Star Podcast Network include great programs such as the Pop Prison Power Podcast, Cult 45, So Wizard, Fans on Patrol, the Gorilla Brain Podcast, and of course, Superhero Speak. Search for hashtag GWAllStars. You will not be disappointed. Now, it's back to Dave and the boys on Superhero Speak. We are yep, salty tonight. Jeez. Yes, I'm just jumping on board. Donald will tell you how to fuck yourself real good. The salt. Stings. Burns. Directly to apply directly to the wound. Like in the eye. Like in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when I get a salty discharge in my eye. <laughs> Thanks for that, Don. Don't forget to check out the Omega Level Podcast available on YouTube and wherever Pakai. What? Omega Level Nerds. Omega Level Nerds podcast available on YouTube wherever podcasts are available as long as it lasts. You weren't here last week, JD. We had said that Don messaged me, said that he has some personal projects going on, oh. some things, and he won't be able to review podcast comic books for the website anymore. Oh, and bummer. he might be stopping his podcast. That's, so it's a shame, sucks, but I is. hope I, like I hope he gets through whatever he's going through. So yeah. I'm going to say oh. one more time: go, go watch, go listen. Boost his numbers and then he'll keep doing it. Or send him money, Mon- m- cold hard cash. That usually works. JD froze. <laughs> he he's just in shock. So while JD just shock, while, while JD comes back, let's, let's take, take a quick a- commercial break. Whoa, 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 whoa. Send- oh shit! And we'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Cock shit piss motherfucker. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. Okay. I, think, I, I think I heard that now. Nothing's working. Okay. All right, we're back. We're back. We're 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 cursing. We're drunk. Apparently, we're doing an audio test using sober, um, you colloquialisms. <laughs> colloquialisms. All right, we got a little bit of news to talk about here. Two articles I think are related, and fuck this world. All oh right. my god! Stop drinking. Like <laughs> Ezra even Miller. I'm has a messiah complex and apparently a harem yeah he's got his what 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 was it with lonsky and uh, the the 12 the 12 angels or whatever soulmates soulmates. the 12 soulmates right so apparently this is what ezra miller has in real life and or well we hope yeah so they're all (laughs) why do do we allow this guy to be this crazy and date okay so so i have no idea why why does he get all interview with a vanity fair and like they talked to him and and like apparently like he has these delusions and this goes back to that article uh, a couple of months like a month ago or so where how he was he grooming picked? like an 18 year old yeah how does he get picked for any jobs these days and 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 in spite of all this the other article that goes along with this, with this is, is they announced that the score for flash is now complete yay this movie better rule I'm this, like, I am so like, this is, this I'm movie's going to have to like earn an Oscar to make it like, look, I'm not, and here's just, the thing, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to defend anything that you can't defend it. That's the problem. No, 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 no. Guardians of the galaxy director gun gun. gun. Yeah. I'm not going to defend any of those tweets that James Gunn put out that were a little edgy and got him fired from Disney, but that's the thing. He got fired and it was like, you're done. You know, I mean, of course, things change. He came out with Guard- not Guardians, Suicide Squad, big hit. Oh, hey, you know what? We love you again. Come on. Come on back. But, like. I still love you. I still love you, baby. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, come on. Everything I didn't mean what that I comes said. out about this person, <laughs> it's it gets worse and worse and worse. Like See, this, this is going down as one of the worst casting decisions of all freaking time. With the exception of, was it Genghis Khan by. Don the- Wayne. By John Wayne, right? That's like, like wait, but, but, but you know what? what? But, the, but here's John the here's Wayne, the thing. thing. That was that the was... '60s, like, whatever. This is 2022. Come on, I, I don't I don't get it. Like, I just like people get canceled for so much less. Why did you say that? There's a, if, if there's one dude that can, <laughs> he's talking. He doesn't realize he locked up again. To 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 quote one great American piece of 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 movie nostalgia. I was frozen today. <laughs> Look it up. That does... And he's not even that good of an actor. No, he's not. You you just caught up with yourself, JD. Kinda. 
I'm taking another drink. Check check your background te- tests on your on your PC because you seem to be freezing a lot. He's a Mac guy. He's not a he's not a PC guy. He's a Mac guy. One of those creative I've, I've, people. I've, with a Mac. I've always said that Macs suck. So okay, JD is in the waiting room again, and he's re-entering. We are experiencing te- technical, technical difficulties. difficulties. Please send us alcohol. Yes, all the alcohols. All right. Kind yeah, of does. So he's not. You're right. He's not even that good of an actor. That was the last thing we heard from you. Yeah. The last thing I said, whatever. And he's but, not. You're right. He really isn't. Like, like he plays Barry Allen as someone with Parkinson's or not Parkinson's. I'm sorry. Uh, Parkinson's. Asperger's. Asperger's. Asperger's yeah. Sorry. You know, and it's Big just difference. like, yeah. Well, you're right. Yeah. He, he's not shaking, but it's still, it's just like it doesn't. It. I don't know. It was terrible. It was terrible in Justice League. It's just like why, why, why? No, I don't get it. I don't think he's that good. I don't think he's worth all the trouble. I don't care how good this movie is going to be. This motherfucker is turning into David Koresh beneath our before our eyes. It's yeah. going to flop. It is going to flop at this point. They have to like. I can't believe that somebody at Warner Brothers. Is. I don't think it is. I think it's. I think the. I think they're going to get a lot of people to check this thing out. Much like the I made a die die my darling joke. People went to that movie because they heard it was such a shit show. Do you think? Like, uh, yeah. I, okay. I do. I was going to say one. Can. I was going to say, like, I'm shocked that someone at Warner Brothers didn't say kill this Vanity Fair article before it comes out. But you're right. Is this a no press is bad press? I think so. Or bad. Pre- yeah. No press is bad press. Well, yeah. I mean, like, like, they're not going to do anything with him again. They got to get this movie done and then they're going to be done with it. It's very easy. Barry Allen dies in the comics. That's all you got to do. Kill this dude off. Right. And they need to make Move money on. off of this. Like, They've Warner Brothers is hurting. They've, An article I did not include, I completely forgot, is rumors has it. I don't know how true this is. Warner Brothers only has enough money to distribute two movies a year. Yeah, that's the rumor going around. You know, I mean, like, we got to get to the other rumor too eventually. Like, Warner needs this to be a hit. Yeah. They've got a lot of mess in it. The whole future of this of this film series is like weighted on this movie. We, we can talk about the other thing that I put in in Discord if you want, because that kind of segues from what you're talking about right I now. I checked it. You think I checked the Discord? What, what was oh. on the Discord? Well, uh, I sent well, it in the email too. You're talking about the um, Warner Brothers Discovery yes. um, you, issue. They can, they are in such you, trouble that Comcast is actually looking at them very interestingly now can, because the stock is so low. Can you talk about that, John? I well, I have first off. Okay, yeah. Okay. So uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before wait, wait, we start. Wait, wait. You had actually said that, <laughs> that your network blocked you from reading the article at work. Okay, yes. But here here's the thing. First off, yes, they don't listen I work to the show. <laughs> I work I work for Comcast. Second off, I am nowhere near any of those divisions, so I have no knowledge of what's going on. I only know what anybody else is seeing in the in the in the media now. So when I came across this report on CBR. And mostly because I was checking the, uh, it it just so happened that this was in a list of interesting things about Comcast stock because my stock options are so low. But yeah, this, apparently, apparently some corporation called Comcast is really looking hard at <laughs> Warner Discovery now because they've, they've screwed up so badly that their stock options are low enough to make it a, a an interesting takeover target. Well, and here's what's interesting is Peacock is losing lots you can't say that john i can say that peacock is a disaster of a platform it's losing money and say what you want about warner media but hbo max rules like it it works real well it's functional like it's uh, it's doing good as compared to a lot of the other streaming platforms which none of them are, are burning up the charts right now yeah with the exception of disney i believe yep so it's very interesting. I heard about this through the wrestling websites because both major wrestling companies are tied. One is tied to Comcast. One is tied to Warner media. So a lot of people went, well, what would happen? I mean, like if this were to happen, it would not be till 2024. If it is allowed to happen in I mean, general. And we'll, we'll get to, we'll, we'll get to several get reasons. We're here. We're here. We'll, no, no, we'll, we'll get okay. to, wait, no, no, no. Cause our main talk at, topic is coming up at the end and that's one of the main reasons why peacock sucks but oh uh, 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 did i say that but go ahead dave okay wait hold on peacock does suck by. but they were just bought by discovery so would they buy it from discovery or are they going to buy the whole they're going to buy they discovery would buy the whole too? thing that's whole thing. that's that's Our what they're talking about because the thing. stock their stock has tanked so bad, so bad. that it's it terrible. makes it worth it to buy them up they'd be cheap to buy right now the pro- if 
if the government lets them. Because remember, Sinclair Media tried to buy uh, Tribune Media. That would have given yeah. them WGN America a few years ago. And the government said, no, that would give you far too much power. True. And Sinclair has been in a ever since. And and we do need we do need to protect, so what happens, protect ourselves from, from monopolies. monopolies like that. Yeah. Okay. That's so a, what happens if no one buys them and they fail? Someone. Then, then it's a fire sale on on DC. <laughs> it's a, it, it would be it would be a fire sale on the properties. HBO would go like because there's so much that's incorporated in that. Warner Discovery, Discovery would go. Warner would go like and every like all the subsidiary companies, Cartoon Network, Turner, like everything would get fired off. Like that's that's not going to happen. Like it, I could see someone else taking like if Facebook. Yeah. If they the, wanted to buy one, well, that the, would be possible. Yeah, the the other the other tactic they usually use in that case is they take the the productive and was it the, the ones that are making money, the pieces of them that are making That's... money, and and they spin them off spin into them their off. own company, mm -hmm. and yeah. then the ones that are all failing get sold off in a fire sale. Well, the problem is everything's failing right now. Well, that's because they're such idiots. I mean, Zaslav, I've been saying this for weeks, if not months, that Zaslav has not done a good job. And everyone keeps telling me on Twitter, like everyone keeps saying, well, you know, the market loves this. The market loves it. Like the market doesn't love this. No. Like, yeah. look at the stock. No. Like, no, no. Look at the stock. Now, wait, hold on. I'm in sure all Comcast fairness, the, the entire stock market is down, but they've is... lost a lot. Yeah. 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 Who else would buy them? I mean, like, again, when Fox sold to Disney, they didn't sell the entire company. They just right. sold 20th Century Fox. Right. Like Fox News and all that stuff and, and the affiliate networks all stayed separate. They only, they just sold a portion of the company. So, I mean, like the question is, is if Warner Discovery does, I mean, again, it can't happen until 2024. It couldn't happen until then anyway. Mm. So you've got a lot of time. And it needs regulatory approval if needs regulatory were divine. Exactly. Like I said, the is government a, did not let did not let Sinclair buy Tribune Media. Is that and, a contract issue 2024 or I believe that's when the sale when the merger is permanent. Yeah. Okay. And and also this this I mean, I hate to bring this up, but it'll it'll also it also be hinged on who wins the 2024 election. Because if it's the Democrats that win the, the next election, then the FCC will be strengthened and they, they make, they'll make more of a big deal about it okay, than if, gonna, if the conservatives I'll, do. I'll I, that's push, just, that's just I, the way they do. I, you know? I get where you're coming from, but it was the Trump administration that did not allow Sinclair to buy tribute. I think, I think that was like no, a fluke. No. I mean, like that's what I mean. I agree with you. Everyone thought because because Sinclair happen. was Sinclair was doing good by them. Say it's a very unusual for them to have poo pooed that, you know. Very, but I mean that's the right thing to do. And Sinclair wound up losing their shirt by buying all those regional sports networks. Yeah, they sunk billions into that and haven't gotten anything. Again, it was a terrible time because it came along with the pandemic when there was just no content on those yeah. networks. But I mean, like. I would be surprised if either of them let this go through because nobody wants. Say what you want. Nobody in this country wants one powerful voice. Right? Well, they. I mean, in, in most places, you mentioned Sinclair. In most, in most places in the country, I don't know, some like 40, 45 percent of the country, Sinclair is the only voice you've got. I was they gonna own say, literally most everything why, in your area. I was going to say most people don't even realize. Allowed. No, yeah. most people have no idea they're owned by Sinclair. But I mean, like yeah. that's why the government said, mm, no, no, we're not so, going to this happen. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. Like, regardless of, again, politics, fucking get out of here. But it's regardless of, of that, 2024 yeah. is a long time away, especially when a you're talking about stock change. price. Yeah. You know? I mean, you look at it, two years ago, it was 2020, right? We're talking, we're, at this point, two years ago, we're in the dregs of the pandemic. And everybody's like, what is going to happen tomorrow? Yeah. And now is when all those streaming networks were starting to get going. I mean, like, they really started pushing this stuff at what everybody thought was the right time. Because again, what are people gonna do? Everyone's stuck at home. All, right? all except Quibi, actually. <laughs> True. Like everyone, every, like again, in, we're two years past, and we all said this would have this would start imploding, and we've seen it. Yeah. We said it on this show two years ago. This can only last for so long. Yeah. Like Peacock is still pulling stuff off of Hulu because they're trying to make Peacock work. Not gonna work. So, yeah. like, like my thing is what I what. The people I feel sorry for, and I, I know it's stupid, but I know people that work for fucking DC Comics. They're the people I feel sorry for because they probably going to work not knowing day from day if they're going to have a job anymore. Yeah, that that is kind of terrible. That I mean, is, like, that's been the case for more than a decade now. Yeah, I know. I know. The second Warner Brothers, worse. 
But yeah, I agree. A decade ago, Warner Brothers started paying attention to DC and they moved him to Burbank. And like then from yeah. that moment on, like when Paul Levitz was taken out as the man as the publisher of DC, it's been a fucking shit show there ever since. And Warner, Warner is a mess and has been a mess for years. They bought Turner, who has been a mess for decades. You know, like DC has had its issues, but it's always been able to kind of stay away because like they had there was value in it. They just kind of let them do their thing. Right. Then when they got then when they got the idea that hey we can do something with this, it's made it's made DC messier. It's made Warner. I mean, it's it's not good. Like Warner, no. like Warner Warner Media was a nice lesson in in corporate malpractice, and that's only gotten worse since Discovery took it over. Right, right. True. right. It should get better, but not at all. They don't know like, what they're. I, I maintain that Zaslav and those guys don't know what they have. They cannot take the same approach to programming. Because again, that's what it all comes down to is programming. They cannot take the same approach that's made Discovery a success and place it into Warner because Warner is a, it's a completely different business model. And they've shown that they don't really get it. And they, I also don't they think the market not feel good about it. I also think that like when it comes to the DC properties, they haven't known ever what they actually have. They don't understand those properties, what people like about them and how to make them work. I don't know... Like, they, well, they used to. I think it's just been the last... Used to? I think it's been the last 10 years that 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 have barely made it. Because, and then I, I will mean, point you to Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. I, I, I know, I know. But, like, somebody got it there because Bruce Timm, you know? Because That they, whole they, thing and all the a, movies. It's different, but it's different divisions. And you have I know, to, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those kind of things have proven to be... A not, well, like, Warner... Oh. Warner animation has been functional and has always been functional. And I, and I'll bet you dollars to donuts that Warner brothers, the main company does not mess with what Warner animation does. Most especially when it comes to DC movies, they just let them do their own thing because it makes money and they don't understand it. And they're just like, okay, fine, do whatever they don't. They're like, it's cartoons. We don't care. You know? So, yeah. And it works for them and they make money, but not, not the kind of money they make off the movies. No, theoretically. no, no, not at all. That's the thing. If you were talking about, cartoons being released in the theater and making multi-millions maybe a billion dollars then they would care they don't though like look at okay we all love batman the animated series and bruce tim mask of the phantasm was a failure yep and yet it's probably one of the best batman movies ever to come out i right? agree with you but they didn't know what to do with it they didn't know how to market it they didn't true know. yeah you're right they they did they they completely failed on marketing it yes they did they don't know what they had mm -hmm. i mean like it went outside the bounds. And this is also at a time when Mar when Warner was very over programming. Like it's, I just put you to the story of the fifth Superman movie and how, what it took so long to get from the quest for peace to Superman returns mm. and all the failures along the way. And they eventually got a movie and it sucked. And then they rebooted the movie and it still sucked. It made money, but it sucked. So, I mean, like it's not a great studio when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like they can't get out of their way. And it's all, I'm almost part. I don't even care who runs it. They can't get out of their way. Well, it doesn't matter. They've even ruined the animated stuff. Like the Young Justice stuff is good, pretty damn dark, but but good. But like after after the first like I have to say eight to ten straight to video animation movies that they did after the Bruce Tim run, the quality just precipitously dropped. Yeah, because I mean, they start they started doing new because after New Fifty Two. They started. They started changing the characters to in in the animated movies, Corporate and synergy. of course those they sucked. <laughs> Corporate synergy, right? At yes. the same time, they had. I mean, the new Fifty Two made. Mo I would love to go back and do like a deep dive because it's been more than a decade now since the new Fifty Two. That the first like six months of the new Fifty Two, it worked. It was making money. They did a great job getting people into shops and buying books. And there were some really good books that came out of that. Yep. But little by little, they started dwindling away to the point so, where they were less. It was less than what it was before. I would so like I mean, to make a, a counterpoint to that. One of the books that was doing really well was Batman because it was the Court of Owls. And that's because Scott Snyder ignored everything else that was going on in the new 52. 100%. And he yeah. was given that kind of... And he was given that kind of flexibility because he was doing stuff before. Like yeah. he had to run a detective before and he got a carte blanche. Batman 
and Green Lantern, their two most successful properties, did not have to go through the bumps that the rest of the universe went. Right. Yeah. It was the, it was very similar to the Crisis, right? The original Crisis. Batman was the most unchanged character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Them and the Titans were pretty unchanged going in. Like, and this is why this stuff. This why this stuff. Oh, it never works because it's never clean, right? And then Green Lantern got worse, right? Jeff Johns has kind of lost interest in Hal and like his saga petered out. Wonder Woman that got was worse great. too because they, Wonder they, they turned worse. they they turned Wonder Woman from a statesman and a and a no a, they did not no they did not because she was rebooted a year before that by Brian Azzarello and Jim Lee. Yeah. Oh, so and she, that's when they killed her. That's when no they... no no they had a thing before like when she had the the, the choker and like they did they they rebooted one room before the new 52 and then did it like again. Like, so they had two consecutive wonder woman reboots that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like consecutively. All and I like, kn- all, all I know uh, is they, hey. they turned, they turned her from like a, a, was it a, 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 a warrior an statesman, like an ambassador, ambassador yeah. and all that into just a, a dude, bro. Just, so, the, well, but it wasn't, she wasn't selling. Like that's the yeah. thing is when that happens, you have to figure out ways to get them to sell. So yeah, you get a better I, writer. You don't, you don't change your character to something that nobody wants. <laughs> that's the thing though. Is like, you could say a better writer, but I mean, like the guys have pitches, right. And they say, hey, and like, it was Brian Hazarello. Like yeah. he is a good writer. But he probably wasn't the right writer for Wonder Woman. Yeah. But I mean, like there's been a lot of great runs on characters that haven't sold particularly. Well, they should have had a she, not a he write it. That's, yeah, that's also, I mean, yeah. okay, Gail Simone wrote Wonder Woman and it didn't sell a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, what it comes down to at the end of the day, you've got to sell books. Mm-hmm. Scott Snyder on Batman worked. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So a lot Jeff of Johnson on Batman, I mean, on Superman, excuse me, as much as like I, I would get frustrated with the run from time to time, sold, not as sold mm-hmm. as well as his Green Lantern, but I mean, like, it just Brian Bendis is one of the top selling comic writers of the last 30 years. He had a hard time selling Superman books, right? I mean, like, all you can do is give good creators a run, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, speaking of sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, Dave. I was about um, to say, I was going to say, speaking of things that don't make sense, ha, huh, so got all the segues. We're in our we're in our we're in our final season of Flash coming up. They just cast Richard Harmon, who's in the 100, as. Captain Boomerang. It's the, what is it? The Owen Mercer version of Boomerang. But the thing is, it's like, this is one of the issues I've had with Flash from the beginning. And now we're going to like, and they're only getting a half season by to end the show. Yeah. Because apparently CW is being sold as well. Like with all of this. They've the already been sold. Going. They've already mm-hmm. been sold. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's one of the things I've said, like he's had this group of villains called the rogues through his entire run. They never did it. it. They never, they never really did the rogues. No, they didn't. Yep. They, in fact, they used the rogues in Arrow, not in Flash, when there was a crossover episode, and they played a little bit with them in Arrow, but it was just like, and then, then they spun off Captain Cold and, and Heat Wave. Into, 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 yeah, Legends. Legends right. of Tomorrow. It was like, why did they do that? And it's one of the things that's always bugged me about. It's, the, a, the, 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 it's the Sony Sinister Six effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just can't get them together. And it's like, then why do you bring back captain boomerang for the last season it's just like because you're out of ideas yeah uh, th- that's what it comes off as and it's like seriously like that's all you can do is bring back a, a you know a different captain boomerang like <sighs> and, and next the next star is the one that bought the cw they bought a 75 percent stake in it next star the phone next company star. yeah i know right it's like i like do, that that sounds like another warner thing all over again right aol they're gonna, yeah they're gonna do a bunch of reality it's cheap well uh, goodbye cw right. it was nice knowing you yeah i mean they didn't do a lot of great ratings you know let's be real like it wasn't no and it's funny no, the cw was even, always yeah you look at all even the the dc shows like the ratings did really well the first couple of years and then just kept well they they, they they did really good until they got to crisis they did the crisis was okay they didn't put as much money into it as they should have, but but Crisis, the, the, when they when they tied everything across all of the DC CW shows, it that was, was great. good. And then after, it all went to after, crap after, that, after that, they just gave up and stopped trying. I was about to say it went to complete crap after Crisis. It was like, are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Like, I just I don't I don't get it. Flash stopped punching people. Supergirl, the what was the name of the 
the agency in Supergirl, the alien task force um, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they stopped using live ammo. <laughs> their guns and, 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 and Batwoman got changed, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. They had to. That, yeah. yeah, that was a whole issue with the actress you know we, we right. won't get into that whether right she, but but the thing whether is, she left for legitimate reasons or not i don't care but right like, but, the, but whenever the a lead is, leaves a show it's, it's the end the, of the show the way they wrote her out was was stupid, stupid. <laughs> it was beyond stupid like it made oh, no look, a sense. suitcase it's got a bad woman i think i'll just wear the suit and become bad woman <laughs> yeah like this tr- this plane blew up but look the outfit survived so i'm gonna put it on and be Batwoman. yeah fuck you i've got the skills <laughs> I mean, like, it wasn't like the audience for that show was really the comic fans. Like, they really kind of carved their own audience. Yeah, they're more of the Well, they had, but even, even the original audience, they just left behind. They did. I mean. They did. It, it, it was, it's teen soap operas is really what that stuff is. That's yeah. what that network was. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but, was the Riverdale net. Was the but that's why Stargirl network. doesn't make sense on the CW, because Stargirl really wasn't that. It was yeah, a Yeah, it was more, show. way more hardcore than anything they had on yeah, that. Yeah, but they needed, like, there was where else were they going to put it? Right, right. It was supposed to be on HBO Max, and that wound up being not a great platform for them. Well, HBO except Max except that it was a great platform too. because they were able to do stuff on that show on on creatively, HBO Max. Creatively, that they can you imagine right. creatively, not business? Can you imagine with all this crap going on with Warner Brothers and the and, and everything like HBO disappearing? Like that was a staple for how many years in entertainment, yeah. and just going away because of poor decisions. It's still there, but it is a legitimate concern. Like that was what everybody talked about before they did their quarterly call last quarter. And yeah. then they, they tried to quell those rumors, but they still persist. I mean, like, oh, yeah. I don't think it just come out to, to discovery. Doesn't it does. It's not really their business and they don't have a guy in charge who gets right. the business. And mm-hmm. like I said, Zaslov's whole thing is we got to cut, we got to cut, we got to cut. And the market hasn't been impressed with their decision. Not but the, at all. But the thing for for those of you that don't know, us old timers, like HBO stands for home box office. And it was the it was the first it's like the first the, movie channel, really. It was, a, it was the it first was the channel where we channel. could see full length movies that weren't that Boots. were not cut up for network television. Yeah. You know, and to, and to be fair, we got to hear it, the swears on there. The, the <laughs> what is what show? What show is getting the most viewers in all non sports? Show is getting the most more viewers than anything. House of the Dragon. Yeah, like it's still successful. HBO still works. They just got questionable leadership, and right now it's. I was actually affiliate. it's questionable leadership. Yeah. Listening to a podcast the other day, and they were talking about the Emmys. It was an older episode. Like it's a podcast I listen to, but like I haven't been listening to a while, so I was catching up on old episodes. They were talking about the Emmys, and they and they made a really great point. Like everything that won was not on network television anymore. Network yep. television sucks. Right, every, like, it does. Most mm-hmm. of the stuff is on streaming or cable anymore. Yeah, I watch more YouTube now than I do regular streaming services. You know, mm-hmm. like it, it's kind of crazy. I never you if you had asked me about that five years ago, I would said you're nuts. Yeah, network TV is real is high high end reality TV and sports. Right, and the and reality TV sucks because it's all scripted. It's not reality at all. It's just, I honestly think, like, and ratings, people yeah. re- regardless of what you think of the show, because a lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it, I think Big Bang Theory was the last big show on network less TV. Big, less big sitcom. Maybe yeah. Young Sheldon. It was good. No, Young Sheldon does not get the numbers that Big Bang did. Yeah, well, nothing. Nothing gets to them. Like, look at the look at ratings for stuff every week. Like, people, people who paid attention to ratings 10 years ago would be shocked to see what everything that isn't football gets right they they would think that tv has completely collapsed at this point because it kind of has mm. and i think the only way to save and i don't think it's there's there is saving it the only way to say save network tv is to adopt you know the the same ideas that netflix and hbo and all those are because of yeah, standards like, and practices right, just the standards and the government and like what goes over the airwaves is different than what goes over pay but it's networks. stupid it, it doesn't make sense anymore like that's the whole thing it just doesn't make sense yeah. right because every because if you're paying for network tv you're paying for it through you're paying for cable anyway you're right. paying you're paying for cable right but a lot of people have cut cable now and they're going to streaming services so cable is just another streaming service at this point. and and but and that's the whole thing that's too true. right like the other problem is you bought a TV 30 years ago. It had an antenna on it. Yeah. So you could just put on 3, 6, 10 or whatever and watch TV. 
now it doesn't come with an antenna. You can buy an antenna, but you have to buy it separate, you know, so you can watch regular TV on your TV. But most people just connect it to cable or a Roku and watch streaming services. And that's it. Like, yeah, a Roku, uh, was it Roku, a Fire HD from Amazon or, but, you know, what? there's a whole bunch well, of I have a Roku, so. counterpoint. <laughs> You watch live sports. Live sports is doing killer numbers, so people will take time to yeah, watch if you give them something to watch. Where's Where's yeah. Thursday Night Football now, JD? That is on Amazon. Exactly. So but Sunday Night Football isn't the Amazon. Not yet. No, it Not could be. yet. Well, it depends on if they're willing to pay. Like, I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. What's keeping network TV afloat right now is the NFL. Can you imagine, like, I could going tell- on a Netflix to watch? A, a football game it's gonna happen but and but here's I, the thing and here's the thing sorry not not to cut you off the thing that's gonna make that great is that you can watch any fucking game then on netflix it's not gonna be regionalized anymore mm-hmm. you could watch any game that you want just go to it and watch it it's whereas good. now because of network tv well if, if you're in philly you can watch the, the eagles but if you want to see san diego play someone else on the west coast you can't see it because it's not in your region, right? And let and and just just so that you know, one of the re like everybody complains about the price of cable. One of the biggest drivers of the price of your cable bill, besides you know executive pay, is is the sports channels because they keep at like the NFL organization, the MLB organization, the NBA organization. They keep asking for more and more money, and they keep to be. It. And they keep getting it, which is is self destructive. Look, look, is completely self destructive. No, well, they they can 30, ask. People they can have been ask saying for that for fifty years, and it hasn't been self destructive. The NFL but is it, what drive the NFL is literally keeping television. Right. But that's well, but I know, the thing. but the but thing. John's well, no, wait, 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 wait. But but the thing is, like, they ask for more money, so Comcast and Charter and all the other cable companies have to have to spend out the wazoo in order to pay for those so they can they can carry Amazon, them and Amazon then and work. then people and what happens is the end users you know their prices go up and what do they do i don't need cable anymore i'll i'll just cut this and go to youtube red john if what like you that, yeah. if what you say is accurate the numbers for the sports with live sports would be plummeting right now and they aren't they're all no no wait wait they have everything. gone down they, no, have they have gone not, down. Dave. No, they have not gone down. The NFL is doing its best numbers in like a decade. Right? Now. Are you sure? I'm pretty yes, sure I saw an article I last year saying great. last year, this year, the 2022-2023 season is NFL is outperforming itself within a decade. They had the Monday Night Football numbers for the opening weekend were the highest since 1998. Okay, but last year they were they were down. Last year they were down. This I don't think they were actually in twenty in the COVID year they were down. They were up in twenty twenty one and they're even higher in twenty twenty two. So like the live sports is outpacing everything. It's the lifeblood of television. Okay, but that's what I'm saying is that okay, but you've got what Fox, ABC, NBC, is it ABC, CBS, and CBS. The other channels don't have it. Like. The other channels don't matter. Like network over the air, the only the only over the air networks that have ever mattered are the prime networks. And now what they're all connect- when- now they're all connected to major corporations. Like CBS is a Viacom, whatever we ABC call Paramount is now. Disney. ABC is Disney, NBC is Comcast. Yeah, Fox is yeah. Fox is like the oddball right now that used to be super powerful that just is kind of propped up by their TV network and live sports. Exactly. I'm about to say live sports is what Fox has, and that's it. That's it. But I yeah. But just, but I mean, that I like, I know for a fact that one of the problems with the cable bills these, these days has been because of them my... having to pay for, for those, like and that is one of the biggest people... drivers of any subscription, not but just like cable, but, but streaming but as well. That's why people keep, keep, keep these things because they mm. want to watch the NFL specifically. The Here's NFL, my question though. If it went, if it switched over mm. to streaming, if it like Netflix oh, no. picked them up. They're going to try. Do you think? People would go to Netflix to watch it. Absolutely. Whoever, well, whoever, then Netflix whoever would raise the prices, though, because they wouldn't have a choice. They might have to. They're Then Netflix is hurting. Like, whoever controls the NFL controls me. Mm. Whoever controls the True. NFL. What what legitimized Fox as a network in 1994? Oh, no. They, that's that's what Fox the built NFL, themselves on. Yeah. The NFL. They exist. Mm. They opened in 96, and they were a quarter of a network until they got the NFL. Yeah. People yep. want to try to say Mary with Children. No, it was no, the NFL. That helped. And the Simpsons more so than Mary Child, those things like helped build the Fox brand. Fox wasn't 
like functional as a full fledged network until they got the NFL deal in nineteen ninety three. Like it was the best gamble the net, that was the best gamble they ever made. Right. I mean, yeah. that's just that's just what it is. Live sports is controlling television right now, which is fine. These streaming cable networks are getting the good. I still shows. don't even know how we got off on this tangent. We we, we need to move on because we're we've got, television like, hero speak. Yeah. OK, so moving on. Star Wars news, guys, here. James Earl Jones has officially announced he's going to retire as the voice of Darth Vader. He's 91. What do we think? Yeah, what? he's 91. He should retire. I, I, I don't disagree with that. But like, what do we think of that? Like. Are they going to just... They sold it to an AI. Right, yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah, they sold it to an AI, so... Does an AI James Earl Jones voice? Yes. Yeah. Well, that I mean... we fucking we're, scary. Technologically speaking, yeah, technologically speaking, we are at the point now. Like, they have deep fakes. They, we, are, we are at the point where, like where we are, we are realizing like what we knew was going to happen 10, 15 no, years ago, I'm where done. I'm we're going to start I'm out, guys. I'm out. I'm done. CGI. The, the AI's taking over. I'm fucking done. The here's, AI's taking over Star Wars. I'm gone. I'm done. Here's the thing. Right. Here's the thing. A performance is still going to be tough. Someone's going to have to perform, and they're going to have to loop the AI, the AI in over the performance. An AI cannot, right? The AI can. Oh. It can, it can approximate, yet. but it, it can, can approximate it. Yes, yeah. but they can. What they're probably going to do is have a guy perform it, and then the AI would go over it in mirror. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. how it's going to have to be because we're not there yet. Like I've heard, I did an AI, I experimented with an AI audiobook. I was not happy with what I got back. And there's people like you your think... Joanna Pens of the world. They're like, oh, AI audiobooks cheaper, blah, 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 blah. Not good. Could it get there someday? Maybe, but not there. It's not right now. There, there are services that can take a video like the one we're making now that we don't show because we just do the audio release. But there, there are video, there are services right now that can take this video we can upload it to there, and if we want to change something that one of us said, it can do it, and in our freaking voice. So, like, I, like that, and that's just. I try to do that every week. With great you, stuff. That's that doesn't include the stuff that you know they could do if you're if you got Disney money. So I was talking to one of my kids in my graphics one class. So we're teaching them Photoshop, and we're working on photo blending. Uh-huh. You know, taking two things and just blend, using a gradient to blend them together. And he said, "Mr. Oliva," which is weird to be called, by the way, weird. So he's like, Mr. Levi, I told, I showed a bunch of people my picture and they couldn't tell that I made it. They thought it was real. I said, yeah, isn't that cool? He goes, yeah. I said, now don't ever trust a photograph that you see on the internet. Yep. And he yeah. goes, he goes, I never thought of that. I said, yep. You have just learned how to manipulate imagery. Don't trust no, me. you've just learned how to manipulate people. Is half a that's bottle enough? Because yeah, that's, people that's what. People have, been, people have been manipulating people for generations. I, I know, you're, but. You're just but there's, using media to do it. There are certain networks that have taken that to like uh, an art form. Oh, it's using, been like that. Propaganda, propaganda like that has propaganda. existed since yeah. World War II. If not before. I mean, that's just part. I mean, like, dude, we did propaganda. I did my my senior thesis in history was about the use of propaganda in the Mer- in the, the Philippine American War in the early 19th, but in pre World War One and how the oh, really? Used, yeah, that's what I did my my, my thesis you know, thesis on. Nice. And how the, the Hearst papers basically a, oh, manipulated Hearst. America. And, yeah, he manipulated Hearst is another. War. He's yeah, but there's a very famous German psychologist from World War II who uh, came up with a like a theory of propaganda about how to use that in warfare mm-hmm. that that we yeah, follow yeah. today. By the way, in everything like those commercials you watched are because based on that works. theory because it works yep mm-hmm. we laugh when you want to have it your way or mm-mm, mcdonald's or whatever the fuck you're watching thank the uh, thank propaganda <laughs> we just call it we call it a different name because the term propaganda got ruined that was that used to not be a dirty word like it was really the nazis that made that a dirty word because then we associated propaganda with the spread of evil damn nazis all right they ruin everything <laughs> All right. And then the final news in an interview this week, Feige came out and said, because obviously Wakanda Forever is coming out shortly. And he had said in the interview that they felt when they were starting to plan the movie, it was too early. This is this is his words too early to recast the Chala, which actually spoke to me in the sense of it was on the table. Like they were considering it. Oh, of course. I mean, they considered all, everything, I'm sure. But then I kind of wonder, like, why not then push this like why did this have to come out now like they could have pushed this off and recast them later down the line probably because they had other probably because other things you know the marvel stuff i'm sure they have things that hinge on the end of this movie do you think do you think at some point they will find a way to bring him back is it with a different actor i think we've cast our lot uh with this oh okay i'll bring in an ai that (laughs) 
I know enough people that are split on this. I mean, we did the poll and everything, and I do think there are people that feel that he's too important of a character to just are. let go. There are same with Iron Man. Like yeah. I think I think that they have not put resurrection on the table. And I don't know if normal people will accept resurrection the way comic book fans do. Agent Coulson? Yeah, but nobody paid attention to Shield. Shield exists. That's not true. She uh, was they do, does Marvel pay attention to what Marvel happened? Marvel doesn't Shield? pay attention well, to Well, no, Shield. Feige doesn't pay attention That's because Feige didn't it. like the guy who was running the TV stuff and they had a Jeff Loeb. Like, yeah, yeah but if, they never acknowledged it. Have they they've always said Fi- they've always mm-hmm. said Fi- that that Coulson's well, Okay, how many times have they killed Loki? Different. He's a magical character. Mm, he techni- can... technically hasn't resurrected. <laughs> Gamora, <laughs> it's going to be a time variant. Techni- it technically like, hasn't resurrected. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like they get around technicalities, but they haven't tried it with one of their ten pole heroes yet. Hmm. I think I they're going to. Oh well, and then, I imagine at some point they'll try. But the the the, the first character we're really going to get a full resurrection from is Vision. Because it makes, but he's a robot, so yeah. But they set that up, and it's going to be different. Like it's going to be a yeah. different. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, we've been there. I mean, like, I don't foresee them doing that. I could be wrong, but it's just I don't know if the Marvel Cinematic Universe because MCU fans are different than mm. yes, that's what I was saying earlier. MCU fans are different than the comic fans. Yeah, they're not us. They're they're completely different people. They're a completely different fan base. They don't have the touchstones that we have, and they're not as accepting of some of the ridiculousness that we are yeah true that all right i don't know screw you guys all right oh one one thing i wanted to interject here sure sag aftra oh yeah 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 yeah. go go for it okay so crunchyroll big one of the biggest streamers of anime was bought by sony Mm -hmm. last year since they've been bought it came up this year that uh, mob psycho 100 one of the biggest anime properties right now is having its third third season come out i think it's third and when they were doing the english dubs they just sony decided that they this these these new seasons wouldn't be union done so the voice actor of mob the main character of mob psycho 100 that the 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 voice actor who who did that voice said okay sony let's sit down and talk about what our salaries are going to be and very quickly thereafter sony Crunchyroll de- released a statement saying that they were recasting the main voice, and then SAG after went after Sony. So I'm curious about this because is that because he's got the union behind him to help negotiate a better rate? Well, that's the thing they weren't going to do. A, they weren't going to do a union shop. I mean, let's I let's, guess, let's for these okay, for these so new dubs. Let's, it's let's, for the dubs, not for the subs, not not for the original voice actors let's be, from Japan. This is for the English dubs. Let's be completely fair here. Sony is not an American-based company. They're a Japanese-based company. True. They don't have unions in Japan like they have in the United States. So they don't Obviously. have to follow our laws when it comes to that stuff. Right. So, But but SAG-AFTRA actually tweeted on Twitter, Hey, Mob Psycho 100 fans, your favorite character has been recast because Crunchyroll Sony Pictures refuses to even talk about a union contract. It's, quote, it's hashtag just a meeting. That's what you do. That's that's how you do it. They are SAG after is one of the most what definitely the most powerful union in Hollywood, but one yep. of the most powerful unions in the country. And they're excellent, excellent at messaging. And that's how if they're gonna beat Sony, they're gonna have to do it in the public's in the public forum because they won't be able to do it. Because again, they're gonna be like, it's well, anime, who cares? A lot of people care. So Especially when it's all union all right, jobs play, that do me, that do the play, actual dubbing. Let me play devil's advocate though. Was it he came in and said, "Let's talk about my salary," and they went, "Did they make an offer that didn't match what the you know union?" No, no, are? they did. They just went ahead and said, "We're recasting it." That's what you. That's what usually happens. In these so as soon as soon as he said, "Why don't we sit wait, down wait, and have a meeting?" Who's that coming from? Gone. Who's that coming from? Is that coming from Sony or is that coming from him? For, well, from him, but but they've all but basically admitted it. Sony won't put out a statement about that. It makes them yeah, they, but and and this is only we, after this is only up until Sony bought them. Crunchyroll was when they when they and 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 Funimation and all that. They right, were but all, aren't they? They were all American based companies, aren't they? You know what? Is Crunchyroll an American based company or a Japanese based company? Crunchyroll was. I think it it was it was. Oh, that's a good question. I don't. I can't answer that. 
Because uh, if they're an American-based company, they have to deal with the unions. That's the yeah, law. they they, they like, are an American-based company. I'm they I they, they, yeah, they had to I think you maybe non, you can do non-union projects. There's yeah. lots of non-union projects that happen. Like you don't have to deal with with SAG. You choose to deal with SAG. Like with SAG, I'm not gonna make like your life again. Hard. I'm not defending anyone here, but I'm just saying like. I feel like there's a piece missing behind the scenes here somewhere. Like the piece that misses is they didn't is they bought it and don't want to pay the money. Yeah, right. Crunch, they don't want to deal with unions and crunch, well, crunchy also, roll. Unions are expensive because you deal with quality. Right. right. You hire people who work from a union. You're hiring good professionals. But let I mean, right, but, but, but let's unlike, be honest here. Sony's one of the biggest freaking companies in the world. They can they afford are. it. Yeah, but they, they don't want no, to. they can't. Right. Well, they, they, that's the problem though, because like. Right now, the the voice actors in Japan and the anime, and even way more so, the animators are way underpaid. And so, and and Crunchyroll was founded in 2006 by a group in the University of California, Berkeley, yeah. uh, a bunch of Berkeley gra- well, graduates. Yes, so, yes, so yes, you can do non-union stuff in the United States, but most companies are going to try to stick, especially with entertainment, are going to try to work with the unions. Well, that's going to be try. a problem because unions are on the rise right now. So more and popular, and 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 they need more unions popular because now since the 60s. Hmm? more popular now than any time since 1965. Yeah, and 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 they need they like the if you look at all the problems that they've had with animators with like Netflix way underpaying How about the animators. Marvel? How about yeah. Marvel with their digital effects artists? Right. Oh God, yeah, that's right. Too. That's coming out now too. Yeah. Like yeah, they 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 this is this is not a good move. No, but they're gonna try because they're gonna. No, try they'll to try because they're as money as possible. But... but I mean, they're gonna. They're they Sony only. They're only people they have to answer to are their shareholders. If their shareholders want to say spend less money. They're gonna spend less money. That's why the fight's gonna have to happen. If they yeah. can't produce stuff, like it's gonna be a strike. They'll be. A, they're gonna be an animated boy. They're gonna be a voice actor strike. Is what's gonna happen. And they've got to back themselves I, in the core because they're one of only I heard, like three I heard streaming interesting... services now. Oh, and they have all exclusive projects mostly. So it's, you know, they're if they go on strike, that's a ton of money they're going to lose. I heard an interesting commentary, comment, commentator, commentator, commentator today talking about shareholder versus stockholder. And a shareholder is somebody that like, usually in the media, they're talking about somebody who has a thousand shares or whatever. They're on the board. They're mm-hmm. talking about you rich know, people. people are already rich. Whereas mm-hmm. opposed to like, if you or I went out and bought a stock of we would be a Sony, like one or two shares, they don't give a crap what we think. You're right. But Share, shouldn't they? they? No, because the shareholders own the majority of the voting power. You're right. They, they issue the problem. But everyone should get a vote. And the shareholders. That's my thing. Everyone who has a share much. should get a vote in this. Thing. Well, and the shareholders. The they own more shares. Everyone has an equal voice. They just some, some pigs are just Yeah, equal you're right. Others. They have a more yeah. of a voice because of it. Yeah. Because they yeah. own more of it. Yeah. That's the whole idea. I mean, like, Corporation, corporate America is not dem- is not democratic, like at all. It's no, no, we are we are unrestrained commercialism, which is basically proving to be probably one of the worst things for it's an literally oligarchy. any any government, let alone a democracy. So. It's a financial oligarchy. That's how, yeah. that's how these things exist. I mean, like, yeah, yeah it, that's a different conversation for a different show. Social speaks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you I and mean, John can I mean, start that. Yeah, I know, but but I mean, I mean, in all seriousness, like the 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 way they're treating people is subhuman, you know, especially the animators. A lot, a lot. And, they're overworked and underpaid, and until yeah. you fight back, I mean, like there's nothing you can do in those foreign countries because they, a lot of them don't have so, the same value on work that so, the United States has always put on the value of work. Hmm. Right? We've, we've we actually, don't, we don't put much, and we put very we little. We do more, but we do more than a lot of those places. You yeah. know. I mean, it's funny. We've interviewed, we haven't in a long time, but we've interviewed a lot of voice actors on this show. And a lot of them are like, they don't just do one voice and they're known for it or three voices. And they're like hundreds, they're hundreds. They're, they're, they're constantly working. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that's because they're not paid as much as other actors. And it's like, they're all members of SAG after all. Like most of them are, but it's different. The rate, like a SAG, it's not SAG. I think it's after you and say after is the same thing. It wasn't yeah. always. Yeah. But I don't think, I still don't think they get paid the same thing as like no, I don't, I think Robert rates, Downey Jr. No, 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 no clearly. Well, no. I mean like the, you like the, I think it's the minimum and I think the minimum for a voice actor is different than the minimum for, but right. they're guaranteed. It's something. like a waiter minimum yeah. wage versus a regular minimum wage. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, I'm not an expert in, in contract law, but there's, there's definitely a difference. 
and they're, yeah. they're guaranteed not to get taken advantage of like more than they already are but like it's not going to be like in japan where you know you're paid but, a dollar but the point i'm making a, a is, dollar for like five hours of work but the point i'm making is that they're already at the bottom of the barrel and like the for that for sony to turn around and go like yeah we're not even going to pay you the bottom of the barrel in the United yeah States. that's like, the problem yeah yeah so exactly all right well i think we've beaten that to death we're going to take a quick commercial break and be real back real quick with a real quick main topic yeah real quick after these messages we'll be right back all right we're back i know that jd watched it because he already commented in an email that he hated it john <laughs> i hope you watched the premiere episode of quantum leap we've been talking about this show forever on this fucking show so it's we had to watch it right like it you wasn't... are just up with the swears today i just oh, he's, like, he's worked up you are um, asserting yourself so i am just curious what you guys thought we'll start with you jd because you apparently have a lot to say i was really disappointed with what i saw and i watched it last night you guys hear me i'm, I'm i don't trust my internet feed right now yep no hear, no we're, yeah, we're hearing every, every word every time i go silent i'm like did i, did I drop again i was very disappointed with the, the whole thing from from jump i was when i heard the original voice like in the year 1995 dr sam i, I was like all right here we go and then we open on the most stilted poorly acted phony ass party i've ever seen like the info dump party where it's like none of these people felt like they liked each other none of these people felt like they had any relationships it was just we're going to tell you everything about these characters in this party and everyone that we need to find is going to walk into this specific scene it's very like when i say the word writer one-on-one it's very much like what you would see someone trying to do like and i was very disappointed i i thought that and they try when he jumped, when he leapt into the guy, when Ben leaps into his first victim, I felt like, okay, here we go. Now it's starting to feel like quantum leap a little bit. And, and then it really fell apart for me because I think his wife, the Addison character has zero personality, zero charisma, and they have zero chemistry with each other. Right. What really bothered me was that we got no fish out of water element when the, the original quantum leap pilot, you just start with Sam in this body and he doesn't feel and so al has to kind of coax sam along and you're understanding project quantum leap as we move through the there was no info dump yes there was no info dump it just you you were you cared more about the character of sam and tried to understand what was happening whereas in this one they try to get you on the mystery of why he jumped in but they don't do anything really to make me care about that and what hurts too is the lack of a dean stockwell character who's actually entertaining <laughs> nothing like i don't know like this i'm supposed to care because like they love each other but i don't feel it i don't feel like these two are a couple like they don't have any chemistry whatsoever she's not entertaining in the slightest her phony addison is a phony ass name but i know there's people up wow. there named addison it feels oh, wow. phony I, I words cannot describe how let down and disappointed I was by this quantum leap in name only piece of excrement. Okay. John. <laughs> I only watched it today, but oh, before, okay. before that I heard enough about the casting that made me hate it. So the reason why they don't have Scott Bakula on is not because is not because he didn't have time to do it. Because he he's starting another show now, a Western show, by the way. No, that the, show the, that show didn't that show fell through. But go ahead, it oh, fell oh. through. Okay, yeah. but the reason why they he didn't he's not part of this is because NBC told him they didn't want him because they were going in a quote different no. direction. Yeah, we talked about this last week. No, 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 this no, is, no, no. This he is what I heard out. over. This is what I heard a couple of days ago. No, no, because he came out on social media and said he was given the script and he turned it down. That's different. That's I what he it. said. That's what he I says. Get I get but, it. But the thing, but the thing is that the casting that somebody got hold of the casting notes and they specifically said, and and this is me saying this, okay. So people on this show know that I'm okay, for better lack of a better term, I'm liberal about things. But John the casting notes said they each character had to be, you know, they were looking for somebody who is androgynous, they were looking this character had to be south asian this character had to be black this character i'm like what the hell like if, 
felt it felt like that. It felt like it was very okay. much checking boxes. Well, that's it was. It, it and that's and that and then but that's and then TV. I watched it. That's TV it now. No, 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 no. Yeah, like the best TV comes about where they look for no, the no, best no, no, actors no, no. for a position. You ask anyone there, there that works in Hollywood, some... they will tell you there is that is a lot of times the main thing on casting sheets is like they have to meet quotas. They have well, to they check have to boxes. Meet, they have to meet certain check boxes, but when your check boxes include that you're just trying to I don't, get woke bingo. Okay. No, I mean, right. like, All Dave's right. right. Like, I, you're both right. The problem is, is, like, they just casted poorly. Like, yeah. they didn't cast any, but, like, you could do... They didn't wait, cast wait, them wait, because of their on, talent. They casted them because of their... No, I don't... Okay, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I think Raymond Lee is amazing. I think he is really good. He is pretty he good. He is charming. Yes. He, was, mm. he is a great lead for the show. I don't care what you say. Okay. He is a good actor. I didn't say he was a bad actor. I said he's miscast. All right. So now, now let me. I, I don't. Wait, wait. You asked me what my. Okay, yeah, okay, I'm okay, okay. Shit. So he's. He, I, I think he's a good actor, but I think JD has a point. I, I like there's no chemistry between these people. It's lacking the heart of the original. Mm -hmm. They're doing information. They're, they're basically doing all the check boxes that you see these days, which don't make a good show. Like like you said, JD, in the original, you found out about, about Project Quantum Leap over time as things came up in a natural way. Here you're getting the information dump and you know this, that, the other thing. And they're trying to they're trying to put too much on what's happening at the project itself. Yeah. And they're not I focusing agree. enough on the heart of the character who's going through this, like they did with Scott Bakula, like like they did with Sam. Okay. You know, they're, they're putting, to, they, they're, yeah. they're like, oh, it's not enough that he's going to, he's going through, he's, he's taken over somebody's body and he has to try and figure out what went wrong and make it right. No, no. We have to add all of this other intrigue going on in the actual, you know, I don't place care. Itself. I don't care about Project Leap. Right. I care about the Leaper. Yes, and exactly. I don't feel like I got enough. Like I look in her eyes and I just don't feel anything. It's just like, I don't, I didn't, what? Like, or the or the side thing with the security girl, like yeah. you know, and you we haven't met Kate Lee yet. The uh, yeah. what's her name who played Kate Lee on Firefly? She's in this. Yeah, I'm not she it. she she's she's supposedly Al's daughter, um, and has something to do with why Ziggy was completely rewritten before the first lead. And I assume they're going to do something with Sam's daughter because she was she did something. She was with Project Quantum Leap before, right? But oh, the thing I, is, like in okay. the original, in the original Quantum Leap, we didn't even know he was married until like what the second to the last season, third season. Right. I want to yeah. say, yeah. In in this, they're like trying, they're trying to make you care about this couple that you they gave you five seconds to to because understand, and there's no chemistry be, between. They're trying to be different, and I get that. I just don't think that it worked. I don't think it was casted well because it's not what the show was about. Can the show I, was, was about the person. Can leaving. I talk now? Yes. Yes. Sure. Go ahead. We've de we've destroyed it. You can try to put the rubble back together again. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. I see what they were going for. Like, this is a continuation of the original show. Regardless of what you think, they are definitely saying, like, Sam Beckett leaped. He never came home. That's why they, they canceled the project. And then they decided to start it up again. And obviously the intrigue, what they're going for is daughter wants to right the wrong of Sam never coming home. So... They, she figured out some computations, and Raymond Al's Lee's daughter, character, not Sam's. Al, yeah, Al's Raymond, that's why I said Raymond Lee's character. I can't think of his ben. Uh, doctor Ben Song. Ben Song <laughs> decides, like, he's going to jump because no one else is going to let him do it, but he feels obligated to save Sam as well. And that's well, why I think, I think it was also to save his wife. Like he didn't want her getting stuck if any, if something went wrong. That that's the kind of impression that they gave is that he was doing this to make sure that she, yeah, his exactly. his wife was safe. Yeah. But I think I honestly feel that's what the story is: is that they're trying to save Sam, which really sucks. But I kind of feel like why didn't they rewrite it when Scott Bakula said no? I think they're going to try to entice him to come in still. I like, agree. I, I really feel like that that's what they're going for. They're going to be like, come on, the show's doing great. People love it. Like, come on, just come back and we're going to save you and we're going to finally pull you out. The only, I heard, I actually heard on another podcast, they made an argument of, they felt like he turned it down because he's so used to being the lead in a show and he wouldn't be the lead I in this. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a reason. It's possible. 
that 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 played something to do with it because you see that a lot with older actors and a guy who is used to being that i i think i just don't feel it's in the speech. i also kind of feel yeah. like one of the things that drew me in even though all the references are wrong was that the first episode takes place in philly and being a philly boy like <laughs> i like that except of course they said york street there is no york it's old york road which doesn't go which isn't downtown and they said the i can't remember what they called the art museum but i think they said museum of modern art and it's just the philly art museum like there are no there are more to quote stephen king there are more worlds than these so an alternate world philadelphia yeah exactly but obviously it takes took place at the same time as live aid that's when he jumps back 1985 live aids going on which was simulcast in philly and london at the same time if us old people that remember that concert hmm. back then that was a while ago wasn't it and here's the thing i want to say right i watched it on peacock i did not watch it live and of course as soon as the episode ended it was like oh here's the very first quantum leap episode do you want to watch it did either of you go back and watch the original pilot I, of i did i'm sorry i didn't I, I don't understand why that show lasted that pilot sucked well you're looking at it with it's a two-part i know i understand I, i'm watching it in 2022 eyes mm -hmm. but like it was slow it is slow it is very slow it's not until the second half it's a two-parter it's not until the second half, like, Sam starts, I mean, Al starts talking to Sam, explaining what's going on. There's no, exp like, and obviously, I get it because they don't know what's going on at that point. But, like, Al it seems disinterested in helping Sam. They had not, definitely, they had not figured out the show. Right. So that's why, I mean, like, I can honestly say that there's, I'm willing to forgive so, a pilot, right? So that's figured out. So what I I'm know, saying is, they, I feel they, that the actors are trying to get a feel for the characters. The right, yeah, the the writers trying to get like a feel for them. So. This pilot was depending on the shorthand of the original series. It de definitely was. It definitely was. And I will agree, there isn't a lot of chemistry between the two leads. Like you know, that, do that doesn't exclude that doesn't excuse them for. But I trying love, to do the CW thing of packing all this intrigue going on at. I love Project them showing Leap. what's going on at Qu at Project Quantum Leap while they're mm -hmm. also showing what's going on with with ben if where I in the original it, they didn't do that it didn't only have, concentrated on what was going on with sam if i liked any of the characters that were there i would have agreed with you. i just didn't like anybody that worked with any of them i like i like winston's character i'm sorry not winston <laughs> he's just doing ernie hudson like what is yeah. his, i mean like what is his character other than being i'm the guy who who has to really shoulder the load of this because i'm working with a bunch of people that aren't you know exp really experienced it but like, they're just they're, but they're doing they're doing show don't tell right they're like they're not showing us like what was it the the androgynous character where you know suddenly had to go out into the hallway and like you know oh i'm so upset i'm like no you're showing you're showing me that they're upset or yeah you're you're, you're not showing me you're telling me you're beating me over the head well oh, this character is upset about this oh the security person is you know needs to go wants to get get fired because you know, she didn't do her job right. It's like, no, no, show me. Don't don't beat me over the head. We're in 2022. We're very intelligent, you know, people now. And and we we have all this history okay, of the I'll old agree. show owners. We don't I'll need agree you to beat us over the head with all of this exposition and crap. You know, you can't you can't beat comes... into us, you can't beat into us to care about these characters. We the, have the, to the scene where the, the, the security guard goes into Ernie Hudson and says, like fire me because i screwed up my job that was stupid i will say that it was just like you knew he wasn't going to fire her. you knew he was going to turn around and be like well you gave us our only lead like why would i fire you that makes no sense I feel i feel like what really hurts this show was i don't think it was and i'm never the guy who says this but i'll say it here i don't feel like it was particularly well written yeah like I just yeah it wasn't like the, it felt like the the dialogue, nothing felt like natural to me. Like, I think that's why I didn't like the acting because I didn't care for the material that they were given to work with. I just didn't, I had a real hard time with the setup. I had a real hard time with the dialogue. It seemed like they were more interested in what was going on. Would this have worked Quantum better? Leap than what was going on in the leap. But Would this have worked better if they're... they spread it out as a two-parter like the original pilot? Possibly. Maybe possible to tell you. but 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 they but there's still a, a this thing of attention to detail like one of the last scenes is him standing in front of all of these people talking to the hologram 
Like they didn't do that. He, they didn't do, even, you know, even they, in the they, innocence they, they, of the original. Sam, Sam they did, did that. that. All time. Did they? Yeah, Sam I did mean, that I don't remember time. them yeah. doing it that much. Oh though. yeah, he does it in the pilot. Go back and watch the original pilot because the, in... be, again, I've said this a million times. The show keeps saying it. Character trumps everything. Yeah. Well, we'll forgive. We will forgive everything if we like character but we didn't like the characters yet so that's the problem (laughs) i like ben i like the main character but i mean you've got to have interplay you can like the main character but you self say you didn't feel much for his like that's the quirks of the show is the as the the al and sam relationship i don't that doesn't work the show doesn't work and like these two are supposed to be in love and and a married couple it'd have been better if they didn't tell us that Engaged. Right. If they reveal that in the last in the last part of the show where like they're married, but he doesn't remember, now maybe I'm feeling something. Instead of going, we are married. I love you. This is the party that we have. I think we're going to get married, but you don't like parties very much. It was so like okay. Remember and, you when you said that quantum entanglement thing? Oh it's my like, god, it was so like <laughs> stilted, man. I mean, yeah. like they're oh, by I'm the gonna way, try, I'm gonna hold NBC to a higher standard. They did. They did a crappy uh, explanation of quantum entanglement in the in the premiere of the original Quantum Leap as well. I'll give you guys that. Your well, that, but hey, back then they that was just a brand new theory, he's like, dude. He's like, like, take a piece of string and bump yeah, and, we, and gum, gumble it up, and it's like the particles are all touching. It was like, yeah, yeah. Quantum, quantum entanglement, entanglement theory has come a long way since then. Yeah. But but, but it, that that, that either has either to do way with anything. It's just and that's okay for those who don't understand quantum physics at all, like. A lot of quantum leap is based on the concept of quantum entanglement, but or quantum foam. Yeah, you know, maybe it depends on which yeah. branch of quantum. How do you using. how do you kill a vampire? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. There's no such thing as vampires. Yeah, but yep, there is like, such thing as quantum entanglement. It doesn't matter to an enter, to an audience looking for entertainment. What right. matters is do we care about the characters? Mm-hmm. And again, I think I think the guy who plays Ben is very talented. I don't think this role is right for him. I don't. I don't know. I like him. I like him. I like him. I don't think he's. I don't think he's a bad actor. By I kind of feel him. like the I twist feel- that comes in the episode where he's the person he leaped into was actually an undercover cop. No, no. I but wait, hold on. Would have okay. come better if it was a two parter and it ended with them finding out he's an undercover cop. They didn't care about. They didn't care about that. They care about like these characters that the quantum leap were supposed to feel for the people behind the scenes. I don't like. It's the. It's it's like fucking Arrow. Well, you got like the team working behind Oliver. Like this show seems like it's trying to ape more of that stuff. Or like maybe they'll the find the legs and, and they'll concentrate more let's, on Ben's leaps let, let, going let's, forward. Let, let's face it. So. Scott Bakula had something about him, the does, way he acted, and everything that yes. that yeah, that, I think that made people care about him. And and like in in this, you don't have any of that. I'm it, willing to I'm willing to say Raymond Lee has the same charisma as Scott. Bakula. No, no, no not, not even same. close. It's different. He can have a different charisma, and that's okay. I yeah. mean, like, and I I get, I do think the main problem, and this is a thing with acting, is actors have to give and they have to take and they have to be feeling each other. The second they had those two read together and they said yes, go with it, is where the show is lost to me. <laughs> like, that's yeah. a huge problem. She and him, I mean, she could be a great actress too. I don't feel it with the two of them. And it's like you watch auditions, like there's a, there's some great Cheers auditions, right? Where you're watching like Oh, really? He was making a great point about Cheers, ladies and gentlemen, but he froze up. Give him a second. I mean, he was just getting heated up, so. I love the image. He looks like he's yelling at us, as usual. He might have frozen, frozen. He's, I mean, J, I'm, I'm sorry. I agree with JD. Like, I think there was some miscasting going on. And like I said, the rumors I I heard were that they got a hold of the casting sheet and it was like yeah, but they they were just playing woke bingo and again no, this no, is no, coming but... from me that is not making that into that that's normally not a bad thing unless your whole thing but is the whole thing just, was that who came cares, out who cares who the actors are who cares how good they are just make sure they fill a certain a Scott fill a, a certain role I mean Scott you know? publicist came out and said this a while ago. And that's, that's why Scott Bakula came out and said right before the premiere, like, no, they asked me to do it and I turned it down. That's like, that's his that's that's his publicist, though. Like, I don't know. But th- but again, like, e- e- regardless of that, the writing should have been better on this. Like this is a, they're trying to make this a flagship thing. It's built on a huge amount of goodwill from from the original Quantum Leap. There is no reason why they should have. It like hacked the 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 original script for this. 
So you know? are you telling me you hate the main actor in this? So you hate it? I don't know. I don't hate it. I just think I just think it's a combination of pretty bad writing and again a first a first a first episode where they're still trying to figure where they're still trying to figure out you know the actors trying to figure out how they're going to play the character they're trying to figure out how the writers think the character is and all that i think it's just a combination of a bunch of things but they but it the writing should have been better right off the bat and they 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 should have i i don't i don't think that they picked the actors on them like they didn't pick the actors mm. because they were perfect actor for the for the roles that they I, were looking I'll for. I agree with some of the roles, but I do think that Raymond Lee was picked because he's a good actor. He's I think he's a good lead. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. I had to dial in on my phone because my internet died because it's tired of me talking about Quantum Lee. I had a point. Oh yeah, you were watching, you were watching these interviews. Or I'm sorry, you were watching these old auditions for like Cheers and stuff like that, where you see yeah. like known actors play off each other. And yep. it's like, oh, this is okay. This is okay. And then you see the Shelley Long Ted Danson when you're like, oh yeah, that's it. Yep. Or like when you watch, I watch. There's this one where for Star Wars, William Katz auditioning for Luke Skywalker. And William Katz auditioned. Yeah. yeah from Holy Grand's crap! Because like him and uh, Lucas and and uh, Brian De Palma shared auditions. So like some people went to Carrie, some people went to Star Wars. True story. So there's I forget who he's with, but he's auditioning for, and it's fine. It's okay. And then you see Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. You're like, oh, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Russell, one of my favorite actors of all time. Yeah. Auditioned to be Han Solo. And you're like, no. It's right. Harrison Ford. Right. And again, like, it's not bad actors. They're just not right for the role. I just don't think that these two people, which is supposed to be the crux of the show, it didn't work for me. So, side note, I find that so funny. So many actors who went on to have amazing careers auditioned for Star Wars and yet, when Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, and Harrison Ford were making the movie, they were all like, "And and uh, Harrison Ford, what? What did you say? What did you say, JD? Oh boy! But when they were making the movie, and and Alec Guinness, they were like, "Oh, this oh, is this. crap. No one's going to want to see this movie." And then it became Star Wars, yeah, but, obviously. But he, but but here's the no. thing. Like, oh, go ahead, JD. I was saying I wasn't saying anything. Oh, okay. So <laughs> so so like, here's the thing, Raymond. Lee, the same, the same qualities that made Scott Bakula perfect for Sam Beckett was also what I think, my personal opinion, made him horrible as as the the Archer, uh, not Archer, uh, uh, yeah, Archer on Enterprise, Captain Archer, yeah, yeah, on Star right? Trek. But Raymond Lee would have been perfect as Archer on Enterprise. <sighs> but you're just racist against Asians. No, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just. I just put him as the captain of like one of the most important ships in Federation history, but <laughs> but, but he, like his qualities would have made him a perfect captain of a starship. But he's not good in this role where you, where the whole point of the whole show is that the main character is leaping from one life to another, and you have to have a huge amount of empathy. And this character has a a, a an an infinite amount of heart in order to deal with all of these different situations he's going to be put in and all these people he's going to have to care about. And, he, so, and through his caring, you have to care about him and the people. So what makes Sam Beckett such a great character is the fact that although he's a genius, that is not his defining characteristic. He's an everyman. Right. right? It's his heart. It's his charm. It's what makes him work. You're right. It's the fact that, and again, it doesn't have to be the same. They probably wanted it to be different. I just don't think what they gave us worked. Yeah. Right. Because you're, you're right. Because they are making Ben Sun's genius his defining characteristic so far. So far. That might change. Right. right because they didn't. Go ahead. With Sam, we didn't see that like rare, until like it would come out. Because Sam had that Swiss cheese brain, all we saw was his heart. Exactly. You're right. Like, Right, because they, they make a point of saying he has Swiss cheese brain as well, Ben. Like, he can't remember anything. But yet he remembers all these different languages. He remembers some physics that helps him out of the situation. I I get what you're saying. But he can't remember how to drive. That's what, again, it was just, it was plot, it's plot convenience. Right. And again, it was too with Quantum Leap. But again, the Sam Beckett character is so likable that you're willing to forgive him. And you can you can believe that Sam cares so much about the people's lives that he leaps into, well, that he has to fix them. 
Yeah. Like that's all he cares. Because he wants to. He has to. But that's yeah. they, they make that point in this episode in the first episode where he could have just called the cops and, and leaped home, but he was like, but if I do that, his the, the guy who's trying so to help con- his wife it was is so gonna con- die. So he realized con- like I've gotta got stay and, and and stop him. It's like what John said. They told us it. I didn't feel it. Right. With Sam Beckett, you felt it. Like he's talking to these characters and you can see in his eyes, like I have to help them. And he never has to say, no, I have, like it never is expressed. Well, I, I, I have to, but I can't, but no, it's always like, no, we got to stay until we, I mean, like it's the, the empathy of Sam Beckett. If That's the, what makes the character work. Yeah. If the writing were better, he wouldn't have had to say, no, I have to stay. He would have just put the phone down and walked. Uh-huh. Right. Show, don't tell. Especially in acting. Acting is all about emotion. Yeah. Right. I just, and again, I think it could be the character. I think the character of Ben Song is supposed to be super analytical when I don't think that works. That could have worked for the Al character, right? Instead of like this womanizing over the top, you know, a Guido essentially, if they'd have made that character like super analytical and, you know, like data from Star Trek. That could have worked in that case. Instead, we get the void of charisma. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't right. know. I still We're... liked it. I'm going to keep watching it. Oh, I mean, you, I, I've got, and bless you, man. I mean, like, I'm going to say this, like I said, I, I like the Lois and Clark pilot, but I didn't love it enough to want to go back. This one, I, it's in the same category for me. I didn't, I didn't even like it all that much. Like, and I haven't heard a lot of great things about it. I think a lot of people are kind of, it seems like the initial wave is kind of on the same page as John and I. I hope I'm wrong. I hope this, because again, it's happened before. I referenced Cheers. It took Cheers three years to figure out what it was. I think once they announced that the Scott Bakula is coming back and the story is going to be them saving him, people will be like, all right, I'll give it a chance. If he wants to come back. I mean, like, if the buzz on this is bad, he might just want to stay away. Yeah, that's true, too. You know, and I'm not sure what the buzz is, to be quite honest with you. Just the the converse, like I said, the, the few comic people I just, because I, I tweeted last night that I didn't care for it. And I had a bunch of comic people talking to me about it, and it seems like they weren't digging it either. Yeah. You know, again, it's, yeah. not ter- it's not a terrible show. The problem is you calling it Quantum Leap. And like, when you call it Quantum Leap, it has certain expectations. This is the problem with reboot culture, is when you tell me it's going to be this, and it's not this. It doesn't work. Very few shows are Star Trek The Next Generation, where you can be something different and still be effective. Yeah. Yep. True. But how different is Star Trek The Next Generation from the original? You have Um, Data is your Vulcan. You're right. You know, Riker is your Kirk. Yeah. So. It's different um, enough, but I don't disagree. Yeah. All right. Well, that's enough of that nonsense. Stupid. If you like the show, keep watching it. If you haven't watched it yet... I think you should check it out the first episode at least. Let us know what you think. Dave, put a poll up. Put a poll up. I'm curious to see what people think. All yeah, right, that'd be do good that. idea. Do yeah, a poll. Yeah. All right, so let's wrap this up. We have, do we have any recommendations or did you learn anything on the podcast this week? And we'll start with John. I learned that I should not have four shots of bourbon before I come on the show. Oh, John, I'm drunk, so I don't care. Okay. I drank well, a half a bottle of this stuff. More beyond, than half a bottle. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> beyond, beyond that, though, uh, it, it's it, I'm Irish, so I handle it a lot better, I guess. But I mean, I've also learned that I'm I'm glad that I like subs rather than dubs for anime because rather than doms, you prefer subs to doms. Yeah, yeah, subs to doms. Right. <laughs> nice subs to doms. Nice. Um, uh, too yeah. controversial for an episode title. No, I think this is going to be called <laughs> drunk leaping. But go ahead. Uh, <laughs> i've got other than that i've got you know it's it's getting hard because like i said this was a very light season for anime and i've already pretty much suggested everything that i like parallel parallel world pharmacy ended as good as it started which makes it for me the standout for this this season but uh, otherwise i've got i've got nothing really i can i can suggest right now Right. So, well, oh, except maybe JD's books because I just started reading your books, JD. Oh, I'm, I, I finally, I'm finally, I finally got them all queued up in Kindle, and and I just started reading the Book of Jericho. So I'm on book one, and I'm gonna power through that this week. Be kind. Did you read Harvest Moon yet? No, should I? The prequel. Ah, now I'll read Harvest Moon first then. Okay. You can read them. You can read them out of order. You can, the, 
Book of Jericho is not new with Harvest Moon, but The Devil's Prayer comes right after Harvest Moon, so I'd recommend. It's also a better book, so quite frankly. So read Harvest Moon first, then you can read. Fir- you, you can read either or. I mean, like you could read Book of Jericho and then Harvest Moon. Can I have Harvest a map? <laughs> no, just those two. It's like when I wrote it, like I felt like I needed a prequel book, and the prequel book wound up becoming like important. It's it's fine. Okay. You don't need it. I'll I'll well I'll I'll download it first because I'm already yeah, I'm already just uh, of what on chapter two of of Jericho so I'll just switch to Harvest Moon finish that off and get this so anyway that that's all I've got I got nothing else what about you JD I learned that my internet connection freaking sucks and <laughs> it's done nothing but let me down and it's, it's like been, that in the car it hasn't been this bad before though no it hasn't today I don't know what's with our internet today it's just been awful anyway I just finished fairy tale the latest book by stephen king and god did i love it it was a bit i wouldn't say different but it's not what most people think of a stephen king but if you read stephen king you're like oh yeah it's clearly stephen king this is a story about a kid who saves an old man who broke his hip and like the old man breaks his hip kid finds him and kind of helps you know helps the old man out and they form a relationship and the kid falls in love with the guy's dog and then you find out that this old man has a secret and that secret is that he has found a portal to a world that is very, not like the world of fairy tales, but a world that clearly inspired fairy tales. And this kid goes into this world and winds up becoming a major part of the fairy tale. And it's incredibly awesome. And it ties into some Cthulhu mythos that he really played up in revival and it's got some dark towerness in it, and it's just a really good story that takes a crazy left turn that I really enjoy. Didn't I read somewhere that Stephen King was jealous of Lovecraft? He very he he very clearly admires Lovecraft because he takes a lot of like he takes a lot of Lovecraft principles, and not in all his work, but a good chunk. But you can tell that he really admires Lovecraft. But he's much better at writing characters than Lovecraft was ever. Yeah, like. Crap was great at concepts, right? right? But he was he was very stilted language, and you know, and it was always about like the idea of this monster and the idea of this madness. Whereas King tells you about the people that are going through this. And this right. one isn't so much about madness, so much as when you get to the end and you're like, oh my god, that's you know, and like, but it works, and he ties it into actual like folklore as opposed to like the 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 Cthulhu cycle or something like that. So I mean, it really worked well. And it, at the end of the day, it's just a story about a kid who's you know forced to find something of himself. Very fairy tales. Very, very Jack and the Beanstalk, to be quite honest. Hmm. Very much based in Jack and the Beanstalk. And I, I quite, I because I, I finished, I finished Revival before this, and that was such a downbeat, downtrodden, like yeah. made a life story. And this one, it works as a complement to that one, where this one. I felt great. I felt just like a, I felt great after reading this book. So I can't say enough good things about it. Neat. All right. Well, I learned something about John that I can't share. Even though we've been friends for over 10 years, it's weird to learn new things about people. Well, he had a third nipple. Exactly. I hey. also learned that a half a bottle of saucy apple, Fix apple one, liqueur, it's well, saucy. It will knock me on my ass. And, and of course, I would recommend that you go to SuperheroSpeak.com where you can find the podcast every week. Links to all our social media at the top of the page. Comic book reviews by our good friend D-Square for now. If you want to write reviews for us, hit me up. Send an email to Dave at SuperheroSpeak.com or on social media at SuperheroSpeak. And, you know, we're looking for people who are willing to take our abuse and write some great comic book reviews. And... Can you throw a Twitter post stuff on it because we can share it and I think we can find some people. All right, I will do that. And then also, I would recommend look, you know what? Go watch Quantum Leap. Let us know what you think. Yeah, Don't listen watch to it. the haters. We're going to put a poll up. Seriously, want to know what, what people are thinking about this show. I, I enjoyed it. And I think it mainly was resting on Raymond Lee's shoulders. I think he's charming. I think he's a great actor. And I think he's a good lead. And, and yeah, and I will also recommend. Make sure that you watch at least the first episode of Sandman because John, JD missed this part while he was out. But we will be reviewing the first episode of that because our audience demanded it on social media. So, and John okay. has already watched the show. And it's well worth it. You should be happy. Yeah. So, we will be talking about that on next week's episode. 
So until then, as always, thanks for listening. And don't let you keep caught in the door. Have a good week. Fuck. What? I felt like we needed a fucking dip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>